Okay, let's had to get the camera cleaned up just a little bit. Hope everybody's doing well tonight. Let's see, who do we have on? Okay, we got B on. What's going on, B? Uh, Marcus, how you doing? He says, Aloha. We got Crimson Creek in the house. Uh, crap, I need a, I need a cozy. Let me go get one. Thought I left one on the table. Hold up. BRB. So, tonight, I know you guys are going to ask, so I have a newly designed Rockstar Energy Can, yeah, but the reason why I have this one is it has the most caffeine, 300 milligrams of caffeine. Will it work? Probably not. My Wednesdays are very long days. So I have this, and I also have some of this you guys can see the the line yep it was in the freezer and then i kind of treated myself tonight i got some ice cream so we're gonna have a good old time tonight talking laughing joking and let me get through saying hi to a couple more folks uh boy blue barbecue what's going on uh da -da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Will's Chasing History. How you doing? Uh, Jamie says, greetings, good people of Q. Hey there, Dash. What's in the glass today? Today. <laughs> All right. So, I have, like I said, I have some, the Rockstar Energy Drink. So, this is the, this is, you know, sugar-free. Yeah, you know. Uh, but it's cotton candy. Actually, I'm digging this one. Again, this one, this particular can I got because of the fact that it is 300 milligrams of caffeine. Now, what I did tonight that I haven't ever done before, I actually went ahead and I downed one of these about an hour ago. So, because of the fact that I downed it about an hour ago, I'm hoping it'll help me, you know, not do the Wi-Fi. All right. So we're gonna we we gotta we gotta pour a little bit. I wanted to pour about a third of what was in the jar. So that's that's where we started. That's where we're at now. And one drink tonight. Because this, this stuff is, uh, you know, is serious. I can't be acting a fool on camera. What's up, Kent? How you doing this evening? Where is Kent's sticker? There it is. Yeah, I got a new sticker tonight. I don't know, Justin, he's not here yet. Or maybe, you know, he's doing something else and he'll watch the replay later. But Justin sent me his sticker. Justin from Papa Bear's Kitchen. If you haven't and don't already know, go ahead and give Justin a follow. Papa Bear's Kitchen. All right, there you go so you can see it. Uh, and, you know, he's on Instagram and obviously there's his website. <laughs> Uh, what's going on, Jimmy? How you doing? Shannon, hello, hello. Terry, Kent, Kent, what's up? Chef Arell, what's Gucci with you, my man? What's up, Chef? KB, I'm hungry. I'm Dash. <laughs> Mason Jar Barbecue, Tyler, what's going on, Tyler? Been a minute. You know, Tyler, I mean, I mean, come on, send me some more root beer, please. And thank you in advance. I mean, please. <laughs> wow, Bills, how you doing? What's up, Alton? How you doing this evening? Good brother. Uh, short tranquilizers. Yep, if that's what you want to call it. <laughs> Frio. Oh, man. Yes, it has been a while, Frio. I'm glad to see you. Hope your wife is doing well. I know she's still out there on the front line. So hopefully all is well with you and your family, good brother. Um, <laughs> I won't, I won't tell you what beer I have in the refrigerator. I you mean, know, based off of the fear that I'll probably get laughed at, but it is a, it is Miller Lite. Uh, but tonight we got energy drink and uh, and 
and moonshine. Whew. I know, that's like oxymoronic, right? But guess what? It's going to be all right. <laughs> that one, sure. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, yeah. Man. Meek says, I'm busy tonight. Just stopping by to say hi and give a thumbs up. I definitely appreciate that, good sir. <laughs> well, there's Justin. Liquid Fire. Well, Agua Diente. <laughs> Sean, how you doing? Drinking all that all week. <laughs> New in the machine at work. Okay. What? That's what's up, Jimmy. <laughs> Greetings from Till Death Barbecue and Catering in Canada. Nice. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Alice says, this is serious. This can make you delirious. We so serious. <laughs> we so serious. My whole entire squad is serious. Boom, 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 boom. No, Justin, thank you, sir, for sending your sticker. All right, B says he is got some stickers on the way. Send it! <laughs> All right, Tyler, I appreciate that, man. You know, like I said, hint, hint, wink, wink. Uh, just send it to. <laughs> I definitely, I thoroughly enjoyed that root beer that you sent. Definitely. What's up, Rick? We got to take time and say hi to Rick because Rick is always like, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> oh, man. How's everybody doing this evening? So, if you hear some noise in the background, Taste Lesson number two is actually doing a little bit of construction in the kitchen. We are pulling up some adhesive, or he is pulling up some adhesive tiles. And um, if you hear him in the background, or if you hear noise in the background, or me kind of look, that's what it is. So, actually, Taste Lesson number two. Yeah. There's been a couple people asking when you were going to be making pancakes, or if you were making pancakes. I told them that that was more of a summertime thing because you had a school and you weren't uh, able to stay up late enough to be cooking uh, while the live stream is going on. Yeah. All right. Oh, no, no, no. You go ahead and please finish what you're doing. <laughs> yes. Alton, that's for sure. So are you doing the sweet potato grow off this year? Oh, my gosh. Marcus. Man, my man, you be, you be so on point, you just don't know. Let me show you something. I caught these yesterday. So these are some sweet potatoes. And these are uh, some, uh, what is it, Yukon Gold? Yep, Yukon Gold. I couldn't remember nor read it in the back. So I'm going to grow one Yukon Gold and one sweet potato. So, but you are the second person to ask about that. And if you guys have been following and reading the comments and, and those, golly, dude, I'm sorry. those that uh, comment the most about the potatoes, Victor is definitely in the lead for people or persons who, um, I won't say harass, but who ask about the potatoes. Uh, so yes, I will be doing some potatoes. Victor, oh, look, look, right on cue. There's Victor right there. Huh. Pulled pork pancakes. No pancakes tonight. tonight. Having a few 805 beers with your dad because I'm on vacation. That's what's up. At home and just chilling. Cheers to everyone in the chat. Well, I salute to that. Good looking. Cheers. Mmm. Marcus said, all right. Damn, I must be fat. I thought those were Girl Scout cookies. No, man, there's actually potatoes in there. You grow potatoes from potatoes. You got seed potatoes. Oh, you need to paint the hinges. Damn it, you're right. I do need to paint the hinges. Yeah. Uh, so there's sweet potato, fried potatoes, boiled potatoes, hassleback potatoes, baked potatoes, scallops potatoes. We got... Potatoes out grotten. I mean, you go ahead on keep 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 on listening to some potatoes stuff. Right, you had the keyboard keyboard commanding, so you you want to roll tonight, Alton. So listen, hey, look before we get into talking about barbecue techniques, can you please do me a solid? Hit that thumbs up button for me. I would greatly appreciate it. If you haven't already, 
please do hit that thumbs up. It not only makes me feel better about doing these videos, it really does help these videos and it helps my channel immensely. So I think I'm gonna put this back in the in the in the freezer for right now. Just cause you know, we're drinking and we're talking and, and my ice cream is gonna melt. So give me a second. What's wrong? I just got it. I got it all so close. Oh. I can't well, you're doing a great job over there, buddy, so. Look. Remember I was saying to start from this side, go back that way, but you're still doing a great job, though. All right. I gotta be cheerleader tonight, too. Okay. French fried potatoes, hash brown potatoes, steak potatoes, shoestring potatoes. Yo, speaking of shoestring potatoes, yo, I... I we have a mandolin here, and it's got that little attachment where the, the prongs stick up, and it's got the slicing thing. So I made some shoestring potatoes. Man, when I say they were perfect, what? Man. All right, Laura. Hey. Sorry, Laura. I went to uh, check on my son. I was I was saying that Taste Hustle number two is doing some deconstruction in the kitchen. We are replacing the tiles, the adhesive tiles that we had on the floor. So he is, he, you know, he's earning some money. And he's pulling up the tiles and cleaning up the adhesive. So if you see or hear me kind of jerk my head that way or, excuse me, yell out, I'm talking to him. All right. Kent edit mashed. Al grind potatoes, scallop potatoes. Yeah. Wedgie spud. Yeah. Ah. Crinkle cut potatoes, russet potatoes, purple potatoes, petite potatoes, mashed potatoes, and red potatoes. All right. Can we get yellow potatoes, white potatoes, sweet potatoes? <laughs> Fingerling potatoes. All right. What about some butter potatoes? Potatoes O'Brien. Julianne potatoes. <laughs> Terry's yelling, Julianne potatoes. <laughs> potato salad. Okay. Uh, you know, you can't, you can't trust everybody's potato salad, though. Oh, there's B. Look, potato salad, potato soup, sweet potato fries. Now, actually, you know, I'm I'm a fan of sweet potato fries. Unfortunately, my kids are not. What do you mean? Well, Taste number two says he likes them. When we try to do sweet potatoes, I get mixed reviews. I don't like sweet potatoes. I don't like sweet potato fries. Or excuse me, sweet potato fries. They only really like sweet potatoes when I... Like, I'll, I'll boil sweet potatoes, cut them up into, like, rings, and then put them in, like, a pan and cook them in the oven or finish them in the oven with some butter, some brown sugar, and some cinnamon. Man, talk about delicious. All right. Tater tots, tater rounds. K Beast is Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> Alton, you got beat. <laughs> Well, there's Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head. We're going to be inclusive, so we're going to talk about both of them, all right? Potato Olds. What are those? Uh, look, Rick says Mrs. Potato Head. Uh, Frio says Candy Yams. Yes, indeed. Frio. Ah, ah. Uh, potato Mash. All right. Oh, now we talking. Hold up. Oh, man. Look, look, look. You see... You, I don't have any of the, uh, what is it? It's not Svetka. I can't remember the name of the, the potato vodka, but yes, potato mash. Uh, -huh. Marcus says, raisins do not belong in a potato salad. Marcus, are you, are you, who, are you speaking to someone in particular, Marcus? I'm just, just, just asking. Laura says, potato hash, pop potato hash. Shannon says potato bun, yo. Only, only bread that. Uh, seriously, I really only eat potato bread. I like potato, potato bread, everything. Justin says potato crisp, twice baked potatoes. All right, all right. So, <laughs> I love the fact that we go off on these tangents, <laughs> but let me let me try to rein it back because we're gonna just be talking about potatoes all night, and that's not the point of this particular live stream. So let's we got like another another half a minute or so and you know get them all out. Get like you know, you tell your kids, get your wiggles out, all right, before we start with the serious talk. So let's do that. Get out the potatoes. Uh oh 
Olays from Taco John's Dash. Uh, nope. Potato bombs. Waffle cut potatoes. Spiral cut potatoes. What's going to <laughs> Wayne says, hey, Dash, hope y'all had a good day. Yes, indeed. You know what? I had a great day, but we about to have a great evening. Update, they are no longer calling him Mr. or Mrs. Potato Head. Guess what? Pluto is still a planet, and so are Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head. They're still going to be Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head. Laura says, potato chips. Yep. Silencer. I mean, put potatoes over the muzzle. Wait. <laughs> it might be going too far. Look, I can tell you from experience... That $200 tax stamp ain't no joke. And sometimes you have to do something to create or have a suppress. I mean, yeah, um, a can that you can use in a pinch. Let's put it that way. Uh, potato starch. All right. Crinkle cut potato fries. We've talked about couch potato. Frio, again. Frio. He was talking about the yams earlier. Now he's talking about the, the couch potato. Right. Frio. Ooh, yes. Out and talk about potato rolls, rice potatoes. Okay, pulling up the potato handbrake, potato pierogies. Oh yes, indeed, Mrs. T's pierogies. What? Uh, potato, potato, mashed potato chips, mashed, pot mashed potato chips. What? Bravo, revolutionary says, big bro, uh, uh, bro, big ups from New York City. Stay up. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Smash potatoes on a griddle. You know, it's so funny you say that, Rob. I uh, saw your video of the smashed potatoes, and I was like, hmm, uh-oh. This is potato pew-pews. We can't say the G word around here. We don't want to get demonetized by the YouTube um, nannies. So whenever we talk about G words, we, we say pew-pew, okay? So potato pew-pews, all right. Rob says, hi, folks. Kent out in Cyprus. Yes. Papa's potatoes. All right. You can change potato head. Uh, that has been around for years. Grease. Uh, geez, get a grip on life, people. Who wants to change? I don't know. Instant mashed potatoes. Yo, do not, do not discount instant mashed potatoes. Yo, they are banging. The, like the, the, the instant potatoes that come in a little packet, the, the envelope. Excuse me, envelope. All you gotta do is add some butter and some milk. What? All you do to make them extra delicious is double the amount of milk of, of butter asked for in the recipe. Thank me later. All right, so we are past the 15 minute mark. Let's do this and start talking about some some barbecue techniques. All right. So I I, I came up with this one tonight, or or the reason for tonight's discussion is, and I'm gonna give a shout out to Bumpy. We're gonna talk about Bumpy again. So one, Bumpy is awesome because he cannot necessarily always join the live streams. So what he does and what others have told me is when they're doing something else, they listen to the live streams almost like a podcast. All right. So if you want to believe or, or we can talk about or have this be a podcast of sorts, then, then there you go. You can listen in and you can watch the replay. I always leave these live streams up. Unless I get too drunk and I make a fool of myself and then I'll take those down. So any of you guys who were there for that one, just, just type I in the chat down below. Anyway, Bumpy was talking about the three, two, one. It, it, you know, not the three, two, the, 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 the three, two, one method. All right. I'm talking about ribs. He was talking about how the three, two, one method is a joke, basically. The three, two, one method is going to kind of get you, get you like kind of get you started. If you have zero direction or absolutely no direction on how to do some ribs, the three, two, one method will kind of get you on the right path. And then you have to figure out what sort of deviations or what sort of changes you need to make for your specific cooker in order to make your ribs correctly in order to, in order for your ribs to be right. All right. So what are some other techniques out there that you do employ or totally are like, nope, never doing that, have, never doing that again? Because, you know, we almost always, 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 we try something at least once. So what's something out there that you can say that you're not going to do again? So Alton says, well, there's a three, two, one, a million indirect over coals, live fire, hot and fast, low and slow. Yes. Uh, 
Oh boy. My son, there's taste testing number one. He said he was here for that. Darnell, how you doing this evening? Marcus says foil, foil, foil. Well, darn it, foiled again. What? Scott's on there? Yes. I mean. Yeah, thank you. One. Goodbye. Can I say hi? No. I taste testing number two, taste, I mean, taste testing number one, taste testing number two says hi. I miss you. No, you don't. You just go do the floor, go away, or you're gonna be sent upstairs. Uh, let's see. Kent says roasters, crock pots, air fryers, ninja foodies. Well, that's a tech. That those are our tools. I wouldn't necessarily call it a technique. When I'm talking about technique, I'm talking about just just like what Alton said, the minion method, the, the hot and fast, low and slow, wrapping things in brisket, wrapping things in in butcher paper, um, adding liquid to things when you wrap, not adding things to wrap. Uh, Alton says the three, two, one is like a training wheels for inexperienced barbecue cooks. But you know what, Alton? Sometimes you have to. You have. We all have to start somewhere, and it's one of those things where somebody tells you something is going to work, and it might not work necessarily for you. It could work, and it does work for certain cookers, for certain types of ribs, and there's so many different variables but one of the things that i've always found funny is people say i'm going to use the three two one method well what temperature are you cooking those ribs at are you using baby backs are you using spares are you using a st louis cut spare are you using you know, there's so many different various variables and so many different questions that go unanswered but everyone just assumes that, that you know the answer to the, or the, you know the, the, the rest of the equation. Let's put it that way. So it's like, it's like Jeopardy. I'm going to use the three, two, one method and my ribs are going to be perfect. And you know, you're like, oh, rest in peace, Alice Trebek. The, you, you, you say, well, the answer is cooking baby back ribs at 225 degrees or cooking spare ribs at 217 degrees. I mean, there's so many different variables. And again, I'm picking on the three, two, one method because that's one that everyone, almost every single one of us has tried. All right, so Marcus says, or foil versus peach paper. I am a big fan of foil, and I'll tell you why. The main reason why I like foil, and I don't necessarily like wrapping in aluminum foil, I like using foil pans because I am also, I have to transport a lot of the food from my garage to my house. So putting food into a foil pan, it kills two birds with one stone. It gives me a place, you know, for that meat to braise in its own juices and for it to get tender. Also, it gives me an easy means to pick things up and transport them into my house without hopefully making a mess. Plus also it captures a lot of the jus when I'm doing briskets. Um, da -da 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 -da. boil ribs like Alton does, Kent. Yes, I but you know, I I won't say I've seen it with my own eyes, Kent, but you know, sure. Um, foil boat brisket, okay. What's going on? Taste test number one, Darnell says 321 only at 225 again, but there's so many different variables with the 321 method. So Laura says hello, taste tester number two, three, and one. So taste tester number three is actually upstairs and she should be in bed. Shannon says heavy spritz. All right, so I am not a spritzer. That's a very good, very good point of topic. I've seen people spritz with you know apple cider vinegar or ACV. You hear people um abbreviate apple cider vinegar or or uh, uh as ACV, spritz with water. I've seen folks spritz with beer. I've seen folks spritz with, I saw somebody recently and I can't remember who it was. Um, I think it might've been Pitmaster X maybe. The guy was somewhere across the pond, but I believe he used a coffee pot, put some seasoning in the coffee pot and made a mop sauce. My my manager, one of my best friends, he sent me this video. He's like, yo, check this thing out. I'm like, all right. So I watched the video and he used a, like a, 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 I think it's a percolator or like a drip coffee pot. And he ran, he basically made a tea from his seasonings to mop on, I think it was a rib roast. I can't, I can't remember hundred percent, but I thought that was pretty dope and, and, you know, ingenious, if you will. 
But I was like, okay, that, that's that's different. I've never seen that before. But I mean, there's different things. Now, I don't spritz because I usually put or add water to, yes, Alton, water to my cookers. You see, I have in, in my ugly drum, my number one drum, I have a, a water pan, uh, which is slash diverter plate in Charlotte. If I'm using, trying to do something low and slow, I'm using the slow ones here, which has a water trough. In, excuse me, Tracy, I have a couple, you know, a couple like pans that I'll put water in while I'm cooking. And then also, as far as Charlotte on, excuse me, uh, Sammy on the side of my house, um, whenever I'm cooking something that's lower and slower, I have the diverter plate in and I'll have a a half size or even a full size catering pan underneath whatever it is I'm cooking to add some moisture to my cooking chamber so therefore I don't have to spritz. Now I don't have a offset um you know cooker or offset you know smoker yet I'm kind of contemplating possibly picking one up just just because but I don't have an offset cooker and in even if I do get or will you know get an offset smoker I will probably add a water pan or something in there to be able to have almost like a permanent spot to have water in because I like the way my cookers cook with water. Bessie, Bernadette, and Vicky all have water um, pans and trays or areas for water and I don't have to spritz spray because of the fact that I have water, that I, I have moisture in my cooking chambers. Jimmy says direct versus indirect. Direct cooking, direct fire, is grilling that's not smoking indirect cooking is going to be um going to be smoking a barbecue um and you know alton and i will have this discussion until the, to the day is you know as as long as the day is uh, have the discussion um for as long as the day is <laughs> basically is what i'm trying to say um i am a big proponent or a fan of saying that uh, low and slow is barbecue to me. So let's say Alton says uh, no knocking the three two one at all is literally tr is training wheels for inexperienced cooks to get them into the game and to get them started. Agreed totally because the whole thing is, and you know something that I wish I would have known. I guess you could say from the beginning before I got to the point where I kind of like kept an actual like. You know, in the beginning, you start cooking and you do something and then you, you mess it up or you get it right. And then you try to do it the next time and you make it worse or you do it better. And, you know, what you should do is kind of take notes and jot stuff down and say, well, this is what I did. This is what worked. This is what didn't work. And then you kind of pivot. But in the beginning, most of us don't do that. So if you do the three, two, one method and it kind of gets you in the ballpark, you can say, well, maybe I can smoke it for three hours maybe wrap it for one hour and then let it set for one hour. But when I did the three, two, one method, I put the ribs in for three hours. I had them, I pulled them out in two hours and they were done, like falling apart, done. So I'm like, um, uh, these aren't going to last for an hour. So I just put them on to the, you know, let them on the grill. I put some sauce on them. And I put them on the grill for maybe 15, 20 minutes just to, to try and set the sauce a little bit. And, man, they were they were great. The family was digging them. So Wayne said he melted some beef tallow when wrapping my brisket. Works well for the appearance, but doesn't do much for the taste. Melted beef tallow. Wayne, I don't... I, I, if I'm going to do something, I want it to actually do something. If, if you understand what I'm saying. I will tell you that I'm... Because if you wrap a brisket, you're going to be like you're going to be capturing jus and fat when you unwrap it. That jus and fat is going to come off of that brisket anyway. And to me, or or personally, I don't add any sort of liquid to a brisket when I wrap it up. I don't add liquids to anything when I wrap them up because I had a bad experience where adding a liquid slowed down my cook, and I was cooking pork shoulder, and I've told the story before. I that it slowed my cook down three hours and I was I was multiple hours late on the delivery. The good thing was it was for one of my good good friends, and I got the food to the the drop off spot before the um the the honoree for the surprise party got there. 
Uh, so, Justin says, what are what are the various brisket methods? Well, the main are going to be wrapping or not wrapping, and then fat cap up and fat cap down. Those two things right there are enough to start a war, okay? There are proponents of wrapping and fat cap up, which I am definitely in that camp of. There are proponents of not wrapping and fat cap down. There are proponents of, like, here's another one. Heavy trimming of your brisket, okay, versus like a, a, a light trim. Like I consider myself, or I, I consider what I trim or how I trim my briskets, rather aggressive as far as taking off fat from the top. But I don't trim, and you know, I, I've seen I've seen and heard a lot of folks say, "Oh, I want to make the brisket aerodynamic," because X, Y, and Z point or or choose, or this, this tip of the brisket or that tip of the brisket is going to burn. I I haven't found that to be the case. As long as I'm cooking the brisket evenly and I wrap it and, you know, get it to, to baste in its own juices to braise towards the end. Now, again, I've, I'm also not a fan of the hardest barks out there. I like soft baked cookies. OK, and I I akin the bark on a brisket to a soft baked cookie. OK, most most everybody can understand the difference between a hard bake and a soft baked cookie. I like soft baked cookies. I she our teeth. I don't like to break teeth. I've broken teeth eating things in the past, and I'm not trying to do that. You know, I like soft baked cookies for a reason. I like a softer bark for the same exact reason. So there's just there's three different things right there, Justin. Uh B says three two one doesn't work here in my uh, where I'm at. How my customers want to eat their ribs just falling off the bone. Eat with the spoon. Well, that's what's up. Uh, Laura says, I'm so lost. So I'm thinking if I just get some from you, all the cooks, I might get, uh, I might get it. <laughs> Snoring like Chrissy Snow. Yes, indeed. All right. So KB says three, one, and one is closer to reality. And KB, that might be for your particular cooker. The whole thing is you kind of have to figure out what is going to work for you and your cooker. Holy cow. I'm 10 minutes behind in the comments. I'm sorry. Uh, Justin says separate point and flat before or after smoking or not at all. I separate the point and the flat after cooking. I've seen folks separate the point and the flat before cooking. And the folks that I've seen do that on more or less are cooking for competitions. And the reason they do that is because when you separate the point and the flat um, to two separate pieces off of a brisket, you can build a better bark on the entire crust of the brisket. So when you have the two muscles riding on top of each other, you'll have a smoke ring on like half or three quarters of the brisket this way and half or three quarters of the brisket that way. If you separate the two pieces and parts to two, two separate pieces, you'll get bark and smoke ring around the whole entire thing, which is better for presentation for a competition. Yeah. Uh, Wayne says, I don't separate at all. Yes, in indeed. We got uh, Taylor. He says, uh, hey, old Dash and company. Hope you're all doing well. Yes, sir. Uh, Shannon says, pro foil pants, just uh, way more convenient. Oh, yep. He says he's pro foil pants. It's just way more convenient. Yep. <laughs> you okay over there? Yes, I slipped. I see. <laughs> I caught that at the corner of my eye. What's it called? There's a stain back all right, don't worry about it. You know, we'll, we'll work on it later. Wait, did that say foil? Yes, foil, not foyo, foil and water. Yes, foil and water. No, 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 no. It's not the Baltimore. This is Philadelphia. Because trust me, if it was Baltimore, I'd be saying um, Baltimore and hunt a whole bunch. And it, the ooze and twos and du, uh, du, uh, Doug. Yo, he, oh, man. What you doing over there? How you doing? Oh, man. My last name. They messed up my last name. They put a U in my last name. It sounds like hurry. All right. But it's not hurry. You know what my last name is, Alton. They don't say that. They don't say the A. They say a U. It's her. How? How? I'd be like, no, it's ha. Okay. Like hair. They were like, no, 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 her. No. How you going to tell me how to pronounce my name? No. Uh, Marcus is accurate thermometer in the pit air versus great, uh, great temp. That is a great one because 
when things are on the pit or on your cooker, they have a way of manipulating the heat that sometimes the thermometers, uh, the temp gauges, just don't call it a thermostat, okay? That that will, it, it could interrupt those things. Uh, Rick says it all depends on how you like your ribs. I have customers that like the fall off the bone, I eat overcooked, and I have some that prefer a little firmer. You're exactly right, Rick. So what happens is, you kind of will have to figure out what customers or how your customers are going to like what it is you're doing. I've, I've told you before on how I've cut brisket and I cut it one way and everybody liked it. I cut it another way and man, I had like an uprising. So I got to be different. I, you know, what's going on, Johnny? How you doing? <laughs> That's right, Alton. You tell him. Uh, <laughs> 321 definitely leads to fall off the bone ribs. Yes, indeed, Rick. But again, you know, some people, that's what they thats what they go for. I had a friend of mine. She's like, oh, you know, can I get you to smoke me some chicken for my husband, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, no problem. She said, but I want to make sure it's, it's to the point where it falls off the bone. And I said, well, I don't cook my chicken to the point where it falls off the bone. I said, that's overdone. And she said, well, you know, my husband really likes it when they fall off the bone, this, that, and the other. And I'm like... One, this is not baked chicken. I said, you can still have a little bit of bite on the chicken and it'll be okay. I'm like, try it. She's like, well, you know, I know what he likes and this, that, and the other. I'm like, okay. So you did not place an order? She's like, no. I said, okay. My feelings ain't hurt. I said, it is what it is. Um, IJ says, yes, I seen it. <laughs> Genius. Uh, IG says, going to try it. Okay, going to try what? I'm not sure exactly. Sometimes you have to, because of the fact that I'm behind in the conversation, and I'm still 10 minutes behind, I'm trying to catch up, um, you have to be talking a little bit fuller sentences, especially when I get to talking and ranting, and you know I'm behind in the comments, so I'm sorry. I'm trying to catch up. Uh, Justin said, I watched that video today. Uh, he brewed dry rub and sprayed it on the meat. Okay, yeah. I'm going to place this right here. Ow, Alton, you crazy. Yes, Johnny, Water! Water! Uh, what? Yeah, never heard of her. Bro is here for the win. Uh, da, 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 da. oh, 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 Alton, don't start nothing, won't be nothing. Uh, Justin says, uh, excuse me, B says, I use a water pan and still spritz, but beef, I have a concoction I base with. Oh, <laughs> my man didn't say I made a mop. He said, hold on, I have a concoction. Well, hello, B. All right. Um, excuse me. I shall refer to you as Brian from from here on out. Would you pardon me, sir? Would you would you please pass the grape upon? I mean, come on, man. A concoction. What type of <laughs> we talking barbecue, man? What's going on, Lou? How you doing this evening? He says happy spring break. Well, technically, like one third of my kids are on spring break, and the other two thirds of the of the kids start spring break tomorrow afternoon. So I'm like betwixt the the spring break all right i'm, I'm gonna take B brian's lead and we're gonna use some 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 big words all right uh yeah almost uh have to have water marcus says what's going on tonight man ain't nothing but rent jerry springer well hello does anyone own a pk grill i know there's a couple folks that have pks in the house uh yeah uh, that's going to hold the LSG. Maybe it will hook you up uh, since you're uh, in a YouTube game. I'm, I've seriously considered it, KB, but I really want to reach out to LSG and get that double door cabinet. That would be what I am I'm wishing for, more or less. I believe the whole moisture in your smoker also has to do with uh, where you are logistically. Altitude and such, I personally don't think water pans are required where I am anyway, in my opinion. Well, Rick... You're down in Texas. I don't know, man. It could just, it could be your cooker. It could be, there's there's a lot of different, you know, again, variables. Variables are, you know, there is no one set rule for everything. And that's the point I'm trying to make with this whole thing. Some things work for some folks. Some things work for other folks. And it's going to be contingent upon what you're cooking, where you are geographically, um, you know, like the, t the ambient air temperature. There's so many different variables. You can't say this is what you do. This is how you do it. This or nothing. It's just not going to work. You have to kind of say loosely, this is this is this is how I do it. Or hey, this will get you started, and then you figure out what needs to happen from there. Blind man cooking says, "Good evening, everyone." 
Hey, look, um, don't don't tell him, okay, what I'm holding up right now, okay? Don't don't tell him what I'm holding up. Don't you ruin the surprise. Taste Hustle number two came in here, and he's looking at me because I'm not holding anything up right now. Uh, I didn't ruin it. That's all right. You... Blind man cooking, what's going on, man? I, I waved at you, all right? I, I have to be cognizant of our visually impaired um, watchers and listeners, all right? So I'm going to try to be more descriptive. I actually made a, a point to him when I'm doing different things. I want to try to be more descriptive and and not just say, look at what I'm doing, because there are a few folks that are visually impaired. So, yes. Jimmy says, time to hit the thumbs up. Uh, Lou said, I've never had great success with the 321. Always falls apart. Uh, he says, still yummy, though. Yes, indeed. Shannon says, 321 tastes good and uh, what a lot of people want to fall off the bone. But we know that ribs need a bite. Yes, indeed. Kent says, okay, Dash, I'm back. Just watch Rick. J okay, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I add a hot liquid to my water pan just to uh, and to my brisket wrap. Yes, indeed. So, Johnny... That is one of the things I will say when or if people ask about adding a liquid to, uh, you know, something to wrap. I will say make sure that that liquid is warm because and I'll explain. I had an experience where I added some liquid to a cook. I added some. It was apple juice. Now, it wasn't refrigerator cold, but it was room temperature cold. And I, I explained it. And, and, and when you when you think about it in hindsight, it makes a lot of sense. The cooker had to warm up the liquid that I put it or that I put that I added into the pan with the pork shoulder. But and once the liquid came up to temperature and got warm, then the pork shoulder kept cooking. So if you're going to add any liquid or anything to your to a cook or to a wrap or before you wrap, make sure it's warm because your cooker will have to fight to warm that up before it can proceed with your cook. All right. <laughs> Look, Allison says there is Texas brisket and everybody else. Sure thing. Uh huh. Uh, da, 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 da. Da, da, da. All right. So Taylor says uh, he has actually come to the conclusion that here lately too. He's so Taylor's down in Alabama. He says he lives in a high high humidity environment. He stopped using water pan water Alton and haven't noticed much of a difference. Uh, Shannon says light trim. Uh, need that fat. <laughs> you you know, Bumpy says, "Hey yo, what's going on, Bumpy?" So you know, uh, Bumpy, I, I like every now and again. I I I'll, I will give credit where credit is due. And I told you guys earlier that the reason we're talking about barbecue techniques is because of Bumpy. He put out a vision. Uh, excuse me, a video today. Well, you know, he had a vision, but he put out a video today talking about you know his two cents. So if you guys have not or do not know who Bumpy is, go out. Check out Bumpy's channel. He's, you know, I, I like shouting out little guys who are up and coming, and I like what he's doing on his channel. He's figured out that cooking and putting the videos out isn't necessarily for him, but he wants to give some, like, commentary, if you will. And he talked about his two cents. And his two cents talk today was about the 321 method, which is why we're talking about techniques. And I'm not picking on the 321 method. It's just that the 321 method is one of those things that almost everybody has tried. So that's why we're talking about different techniques tonight. So, what are some other techniques out there that you want to discuss? What's going on, James, man? How you doing? I caught a little bit of your stream last night. I wasn't on long enough to be able to say, hey, because it was like, I was going to bed and I looked at my phone and I said, oh, let me check my YouTube comments. And when I scrolled through the see the notifications, I saw you were live. I opened up the window, I pressed the thumbs up and I closed it right out because I was like literally rolling over. But I wanted to uh, let you know that I saw a little bit of the stream last night and I gave you a thumbs up. So I appreciate you, sir, for popping in and, and stopping through. If you break two eat cookies, to get off the meth. Dude, man, you know. Crowns, fillings. I was eating some peanut M and M's and I broke a cap, man. Like that's some fracking echo bull. Uh, foil boat though. I'm gonna do my two cents on the boat. All right, James. Yes, indeed. Uh, this message is ten minutes in the future. Yes, <laughs> TKV. You're right. Uh, pretty much. Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. 
<laughs> Darnell says, I'm, black, I'm backing you. Free food to let me decide. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to catch up. I mentioned it the other night uh, when you were here in the hot seat, but there were a few guys doing a butterfly biscuit. I think it's more for the competition style, like you said. Well, that's what's up, B. I agree. Um, I've never seen anybody backyard, but then again, most of the, most people, I don't know. If you try to butterfly a brisket, I mean, you probably won't post a video about it. Um, but I guess that makes a lot of sense. B, now that you say that, that you talked about on the, on the hot seat, I do remember that, but didn't put one and one together. Uh, draws a line in the room to the right. <laughs> to the left. Alton to the right. Ken to the left. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> oh, man. It's getting hot here. <laughs> da, 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 da. Ding, ding, ding. Dutch cuts off his gloves and goes bare knuckle. All right. No mouse speed, not a cup. Street bro, man. It's backyard. We were backyard brawling. Remember uh, Kimbo Slice? Yo, Kimbo Slice was my favorite, favorite, favorite backyard brawler. My man, yo, Kimbo, I was I was actually teaching in Kimbo's heyday. I used to teach, you know, computer stuff. I won't say back in the day, but but way back when. And it's funny because, you know, I always had a beard. My beard was never this big, but man, I had it, you know, Kimbo used to be like, get my bread. Get my bread. He can come out there. Boop, 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 boop. 13 piece somebody, lump their eye up, black their eye, and knock out their eye from the socket and get my bread. Man, I love some Kimbo Slice. May he rest in peace. Um, Lou says, when resting meat, do you uh, let it kind of steam off first before you wrap it to rest? So I don't wrap anything to rest tightly. I'll, oh, the only exception I will say when I keep things wrapped tightly is when like, I'm pressed for time and I might try and cheat and pull something a little bit early. Like it'll hit a temperature that I want, but it's not like completely, completely butter soft. That's the only time I will leave something wrapped tightly. Other than that, if it, if it hits the temperature I need and it feels right, then I will go ahead and, and you know, like I said, probe it. And, and if it's probe timber, tender, I will open up the foil and I will vent at least a quarter to a halfway open so that the temperature drops and it doesn't continue to cook. But I found that if I'm pressed for time and I'm not, I, I need to kind of rush to cook a little bit, and we all have those cooks that just take longer, I will go ahead and leave it wrapped up to help tenderize the meat while it is uh, resting. I was just, man, I ain't got time to do all that fighting, <laughs> getting my feet hurt and whatnot. I got the pew pew. Hey, I'm right there with you. Uh, put the meat in the foil pan or wrap the meat and put it in the foil pan. Just put it in the foil pan. You, I mean, you, you're doing too much. That's why, I like, you know, people, I see, I've seen people wrap ribs, racks of ribs individually. I used to do that. And then I was like, why am I doing that, man? I'm using up 13 pieces of foil and I'm wrapping up, you know, double foil in it. Just put it in one foil pan. If I'm doing three racks of ribs, I will lay two out and I'll turn the other, like the, the last one upside down in between the two. Or I'll kind of waterfall those those ribs and kind of stack them up. And it is okay. Um, the most ribs I will get into one foil pan is six racks. And I'll just kind of stand them off to the side and they'll just lay on each other. But I, I just, I don't, um, uh, I would suggest maybe uh, taste test number two, putting them in kind of, you're going to put a hole in the bag, probably. Yeah, I know. Uh-huh. I know you want to avoid touching the tiles as much as possible. They are pretty dirty. I know. Good thing we have soap and water. Water, Alton. Water. Ah, uh, let's see. Jamie says, if you want to follow the bone ribs, just order pulled pork. And I like the way she thinks. She's not wrong. So was water a part of the East Coast barbecue scene? Uh, we ain't got that down here. Yeah, there's a whole lot of things y'all don't have down there. Stinger paintball. Oh, <laughs> it is. Alton. Uh, da -da. Da -da -da. Nice. Chili screwed everyone with that fall off the bone thing. Yeah. And I only cook baby bat ribs, too, So which is hilarious. Kisses, uh, Godfrey from Fresh Prince. It's Jeffrey. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, thank you. I'm like, what is he? Wait a minute. I'm talking about B. I'm talking about passing the grape and palm. Foil spare ribs once they done 30 minutes. All right. Uh, da -da. Yeah, man. Definitely water pew pews. Hell yeah. And it's W O U D E R. Water. Hmm. Ooh, buddy. That. That, that clear hit differently with some energy drink. Uh, it do. Not just different, but differently. Your accent is quite grand with accent. Yes. This is how we do it. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, my 500 gallon. I never use water pan. All right. Da, 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 da. Speaking of bite, uh, see that jail? Oh, no. Ooh, I did not. Square Table Degenerate Podcast. Well, hello. Thank you so very much for joining in. I know I saw you on um, on the hot seat, or at least the afterword of the hot seat, so I appreciate you, you checking me out while I am live. I definitely appreciate it. I'm just going to tell you now, I apologize. I am still almost 10 minutes behind on the comments. I'm trying to catch up. Give me a second. Uh, room temp in Maryland, <laughs> negative 22 degrees. No, Marcus, you're very funny. But I'm talking about the apple juice I added to my pork shoulder. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, Tom Horson says, hot and fast. So I have, you know, hot and fast to me, Tom, is... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Before we do that, thank you, Tom, for checking in from the land of grills. Definitely appreciate Tom coming in. Tom has more grills than I am old. All right, you done for the... Hey, hey. Clean the, the, the handle on the faucet. Clean the, the spigot, please. Also, anything else you touch with that adhesive stuff, clean it up. Please and thank you. Put the stool back where it needs to be. Come on, put the kitchen back together. Don't just walk away. I know you're tired. It's not even 10 o'clock yet. What do you mean you, you quitting for the night? You could still work a couple more, get up some more towels and clean up. All right. Uh, so Tom says hot and fast. Tom hot and fast is definitely a cooking methodology or a a a, a, a technique. Um, I've never cooked um like like I've never done barbecue hot and fast. I still do barbecue low and slow. Obviously hot and fast. I've done chicken. I've done uh, never done ribs hot and fast. Yeah, uh, chicken, burgers, dogs, hot and fast. That's about it. Everything else low and slow. Uh, Reyes. I guess it's Mitchell Reyes. Is how you, or is it Reyes Mitchell or is it Mitchell Reyes? You know, two first name, well, two last names kind of throws me off. Uh, how you doing? I was wondering with a charcoal box, what's the best way to use it as an offset option or directly underneath? My smoker has both options. Um, I would say as an offset. As an offset, you're going to probably have or be able to maintain a lower temperature. When you have it direct, you're going to have to try and limit the temperature. Or limit it catching it's kind of hard to explain but if it gets too hot you're gonna have you're gonna be grilling as opposed to actually smoking something if you have the the fire indirect you're going to be actually doing a little bit lower and slower cook and you you definitely want to also make sure that you can limit your air intake that will help to to uh, keep your temperatures down uh, Laura says so you give me a shout out dash I'm going to make soap and get someone to <laughs> smoke it. Kent Alton can be the first to try it. Well, look, you can, Laura, you know my address too. I mean, just saying, I um, I like soap. <laughs> Tom says, hello. Uh, big time in house. Yes, Maria, oh my goodness. We got a whole bunch of heavy hitters in here tonight. Lots of folks I haven't seen in a hot minute. Laura, oh, excuse me, Maria. I, you know, obviously she's like, oh man, that checks me out on Instagram. Yes, I do. I, you know, I follow folks on Instagram. Those of you guys who are active on the on the on the live streams and you follow me on Instagram, um, you know, shameless plug. There is my Instagram right there, still drum smokers. So if you follow me on Instagram and you're like, hey, I was on a live stream, and you know, later today or tonight or tomorrow, I will try and follow you back. Laura is proof in that. Um, sometimes though, random people follow me and I don't know who they are. And if I don't know who you are, chances are I might not follow you back. So just comment on a picture and be like, Hey, yo, I was listening to, or I saw your video on. And then I'm like, Oh man, this person's a fan from YouTube. Okay. I'll follow them. 
And I know you're not a, a bot and you are a real person. So please and thank you in advance. Uh, uh, I just see B talking about pine is the best wood. Oh man, y'all, y'all crazy. Kimbo was a whooping uh, average Joe's man. Yeah, he got that AC, but the, but you know what, Alton? So that's that's the difference between you know being outclassed and outgunned. Kimbo had raw power and hands. He had hands. Could nobody mess with his hands? You stood and boxed with that boy. He was going down. But if you used MMA or, or like uh, BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu technique on him, it was a wrap. If you got him on the ground, if you grappled with him, it was a wrap. And that was the whole thing. He was a one-dimensional fighter. And anyone worth their weight and salt was like, okay, uh, you stand on your feet and bang with him, you're going to get knocked out. You knock him down, you trip him up, you get him on the ground, you grapple with him, you're going to win. And that's exactly how Kimbo lost because he was not trained. You know, all these cats got 5, 10, 15 years experience grappling and, excuse me, doing all those other jujitsu things and other, you know, martial arts techniques where Kimbo was just like this. I got one and two. All right. And it didn't work. And he got handed. Uh... <laughs> uh, blind man said that must have been a beer. No, man. How about hot and fast? I'm sorry, uh, Tom. So, unfortunately, you heard me. Um, I am about 10 minutes behind. Uh, scrap cheap by force from Home Depot. Make the best flavor. Ew. Wayne's. Uh, Wayne's for cheesy. Okay. Uh, cherry wood is the best. I like cherry and apple. Those are those are our fa my favorite fruit woods. Cherry and apple. Uh, Alan <laughs> says you do know there's an L in foil, right? Oh, never mind. I'll turn the light off. Don't worry. Nine plus ten is nineteen. Someone says, "What's nine plus ten? It's nineteen." I'm supposed to say twenty-one. But nine plus ten isn't twenty-one. I know, that, but but I mean we're not talking about meme twenty one, okay? I I I know the meme, but I'm answering it correctly. Uh, da, 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 da. Watched the video the other night. Think it was Jeremy Yoder wrapped his brisket in paper and then put it in a foil uh, boat for what? I mean, if you're, I don't know. I just wrap it in, just wrap it in foil. Um. Oh, Alan says, man, it's hard as hell to get caught up on the chat being hooked on phonics. Sure enough. Um, da -da -da, thank you very much for answering my question. I appreciate it. If you have a new subscriber now, and it's uh, Reyes Mitchell. I've been confusing people my whole life. <laughs> oh, Reyes. Reyes means king. So you know what, king? You know, I salute you, brother. Uh, Kimbo was only good on YouTube when he tried to go pro. Uh, he got ate up, and I just explained why. Yep. Y'all need to check out the beef ribs that I did, uh, View to a Grill, did on his Instagram. Yes, indeed. Dang, you're way behind in the comments. Well, look, I'm caught up now, y'all listening, and I need my maid back. Yep. What's your uh, Instagram, Darnell? Yes, I am caught up on the chat. Yeah. Hooked on phonics work for me, Alton. Even with my water and my foil, okay? Man, foil pans. Foil. There's an L in there. There's a, there's there's an L in there. Foil pants. All right. Anyway, I'm caught up. So now y'all can't talk no more smack. Who got who wants smoke now? <laughs> Rick says, "Gotta love night school." You speaking from experience? This, this Rick. This is you know how I how I, I explain that to people. You know, ask me how I know. Is that what you're saying, Rick? Uh, the stuff videos views that wrapping. And paper or foil and tallow to risk it already giving off <laughs> tallow and some bull. I I look I there we go, Alton. This is what I was saying earlier. If if we're gonna do something, I wanted to actually do something. I'm gonna why would I add fat to a brisket that's gonna give off fat? That 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 doesn't make sense to me. Especially because the brisket is not gonna absorb any of that fat. Now I could understand putting fat in something that's leaner. So let's say you're cooking a like a loin or like a, a very lean cut of meat and you want to introduce or add some fat to that to help it to 
to cook or, or provide some sort of insulation, if you will, that I can understand. But why would I add beef fat to something that's going to produce beef fat while I'm cooking it? That just that doesn't. No, that's just something I can't get get with. Uh, the starving pig barbecue is my Instagram. All right. Uh, Darnell, if you have not, or don't follow me on Instagram, if you do follow me on Instagram, just comment, please. So I can make sure, um, that I am following you back. Maria, the hot seat was good with, you know, a couple exceptions. Um, but it was good. I, you know, I had a good time and, and I had cats rolling and, and we, we had a good old time. I was up talking with them folks for quite a while. I think I was up until like two o'clock, almost three o'clock in the morning talking with them. Um, only way adding tallow to brisket makes sense is uh, to a select. Actually, Alton, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you what. Um, I'll tell you the brisket that I would add some tallow to would be a halal brisket, which would is kind of oxymoronic if you. It's kind of oxymoronic if you really really want to think about it that way because the reason being a halal brisket is actually a grade or it's it's a lower i don't say quality but it's a lower grade than a select or a choice um the the halal briskets that i've cooked in the past definitely halal briskets halal ribs definitely uh do not have nowhere or anywhere near as much fat as a lot of the other um grades I'll go get a video where he added fat to a lean cut. Ah, well, that's what's up. So, I mean, I can understand that. But that that is the exception to the rule as far as adding fat to something. Um, <laughs> look, Alton agrees with me. Hold on. Can we? Can we? Can I frame that one right there? I want to take a screenshot. Alton says, exactly. Finally, you said something that makes good barbecue sense. Wait, did I actually type that aloud? Yes, Alton, you did. I think I'm not, like I said, somebody screenshot that and said it to me, please. Alton said I did something right. Man, I knew to, the full moon was a couple days ago. And he told, what? <laughs> All right, Darnell, I, I just want to make sure, you know, sometimes, I you know, I, I tell you, Instagram is a vast place, okay? Oh, my God. What? Ricardo said... Yes, and the Yoda kids said that it was the way Franklin does it. Franklin doesn't add any damn tallow to brisket. He wraps his brisket up. <laughs> Can't no. He he was right. He he said it. All right. <laughs> I thought uh, halal h a l a l. Uh, the, the it is it is a religious thing. But the whole thing is the because of the way that the cows are raised, they're not fattened up. OK, you know, we like I, I don't know if they're if they graze, you know, or if but they're not fattened up. And because they're not fattened up or artificially or like given fat adders, they don't have nearly as much fat and they're they're way leaner. Um, Harry Solo has been doing a whole series on Jeremy Yoder. It's been pretty interesting. OK. Victor says, okay, I'm back. First hour was supposed to be about technique. Did the subject of Bront? No, it did not. Damn it, Victor. Damn it, Victor. Damn it, Victor. Okay, here we go. He says, um, did the tech did uh did the subject of Brian versus Cure come out? Uh I'm a I'm and about applying tallow to a brisket isn't much different than using a mop. Just my thoughts. Um, I, I don't think there's any value add in adding a fat. I don't think a fat can or you know be absorbed or or if you add a mop to a brisket when you're cooking it, that mop will add moisture. The fat is just fat. It's not going to add moisture per se, in my opinion. Right, and we're not touching or broaching that other subject you talked about. Uh, yes, I said something right. Darn it. Uh, <laughs> hey Maria, you take great care too. Uh, she says, "Gotta run, take care, dash and chat, fam." Thumbs up. Hey, oh my gosh, man, Captain Newby, I know, I know, I know, I know. But you know what, man? I, I, I'm just trying to be patient. I'm trying to be patient. I actually, you know, it's so funny. They are headquartered 
about 45 minutes away from my house. And I'm like, yo, can I hit them up and be like, listen, I found your, you know, I found your stock in a talk, like talking. And I am a type 2 diabetic. And I would love, love, love to possibly, you know, see if I can volunteer for, you know, a clinical trial or some sort of trial or, you know, whatever. Because, I mean, if I can get the damn thing, you know, what's the name thing for free and get to talk about it and I'm a shareholder, uh, uh yeah, yeah, sign me up, all right? Uh, let's see, Alan says, man, I got it to where I just don't pay attention to the clickbait videos. People put Franklin or Forgetter, uh, for beginners in their titles now and it contains a lot of BS. I agree, Alton, and that's why I don't do those. Um, I, I, I tell you what I'm doing in my video. But you know what? Those of you guys who have been around and watched me for a very long time know how I feel about clickbait and know how I feel about misleading, misleading titles, okay? I'm not trying to clickbait you. I'm going to tell you what I'm doing in the video. That's it. That's it, and that's all. I'm, I'm a long-time, long-term YouTuber, and not only a content... And, you know, this whole talking about being a content, you know, I am a maker. I am a, a, a YouTube video maker. And I was a watcher before I became a maker. And I know the things that pissed me off are the things that I vowed, vowed, excuse me, to try to never do. I won't say I never do them because every now and again, I do try and do one of those iffy questionable titles that, you know, get people to look. But. Nah, I'm just telling you what I'm doing. That's it. Big Reggie Reds, what's going on? Uh, he says, thoughts on soaking wood in hot water or using dry wood? I am not of the opinion of soaking wood, period. The only wood that I would consider or think about soaking would be wood chips. Other than that, there is no value add. There have been studies shown that show you can put water in, you know, or put wood in water and your your the amount of water that penetrates the wood will be less than an eighth of an inch, which is not very deep into the wood. It's not going to do much of anything. It's all it's doing is really just prolonging the inevitable, which is it's going to dry out. It's going to add, you know, nasty flavor sometimes to your to your food. Man, just throw some chunks on there. The chunks will take a long time to give off that smoke that heat and all of those things like that wood chips are the only exception because they're so um you know they're so small that they will burn up pretty much instantaneously so what i do when i use wood chips though i do not soak my wood chips i will sprinkle them out so that they kind of light and and you know, ignite and travel on. I don't put a whole bunch of, like a whole pile of wood chips in one place, so it, the whole thing can catch on fire. And then I have like a 15 minute fireball and or like a 15 minute smoke bomb. No, I'm gonna sprinkle my wood chips. Uh, you know, if I'm using a slow ones here and I don't have any chunks of wood, or you guys have seen me use like I have an apple tree in my yard, two apple trees. And, you know, my branches, the twigs and things like that, I will spread the twigs out over top of the slow ones here. Or if Kent, you know, were here and, and I was using his his device, the bro ones here, I put them on the grate over top. And the the wood, the it smokes like incense, okay, because it's just smoldering and it doesn't catch on fire right away. Now, if I put that wood into or on the coals, it'll light on fire and then it'll be gone that much faster. I found that by putting the chunks on top of the grate, it lasts a lot longer. Uh, B said, I think liquid tallow would prevent the smoke from penetrating the meat. Okay. But, but B, most of the time, folks are talking about adding tallow to or, or when you're wrapping the brisket. Captain Newbie says 180 day. Oh, yeah, man. Exactly. I would love, love, love to try that 180 day, um, uh, what's the name thing? Uh, uh, continuous glucose monitor. Um, Alan says, I think what bugs the hish out of me is how everyone not from Texas thinks that Franklin is the end all be all of brisket when actually we all do the same ish and many of us long before him. He markets well. Agreed. So, Alton, I'll akin this to Pats and Geno's. You guys know that I'm from Philadelphia. And anybody who goes to Philadelphia, like, we have to get a, a cheesesteak or 
you know, most people not from Philadelphia be like, we have to get a steak and cheese from Pat's and or Gino's. And I'm like, do not waste your time. Do not waste your money. Go somewhere else. But Fig's like, put, put Pat's and Gino's. It's like, <laughs> listen, I'll tell you, I was an adult before I had Pat's and or Gino's, okay? And when I had Pat's or Gino's, I, I, Pat's and Gino's, because I had them on the same night, and the whole thing was, I'm like, all right, well, I went up there with some friends. We've been working in my garage on a car. We did a um, we did a head gasket actually uh, on on a car in my garage. And I'm like, yo, it, it was like two o'clock in the morning. My buddy was like, yo, you trying to go get something to eat? I'm like, oh, you mean I could eat? He's like, yo, you trying to trying to get a cheesesteak? I'm like, F O H, man, we ain't get no cheesesteak from around here. He's like, I know. I'm like. Go on. He's like, yo, let's run up to Philly real quick. I'm like, bruh, um, I've been up all day, blah, blah, blah. I'm not driving. I've been drinking too. He's like, nah, man, we got this. Let's let's go. We took two cars and we balled out. We got to Philly in like an hour and a half from here. It's like from here, from my house to get to where we needed to be. Like on a good day, it's two, two and a quarter, two and a half on a bad day. Our ride. We got we got up there quick, okay? So we got up to Philly and we went to Pat's and Gino's. We ordered a steak from both places. And I'm like, all right, well, look, this is what we're going to do. So I'm like, hey, everybody pick a buddy. We're going to, you take this half, you take that half, and we're going to compare them. Man, both of them were garbage. Both of them, both of them were garbage, okay? Uh, uh, Kent, I am a fat side up. I say that all the time. <laughs> fat side sideways. Uh, Big Reggie says, I agree. I use uh, dry. I just want to know your opinion because you have a lot of experience. Yes. Well, thank you. I am. Um, I don't add. I think that's wait. Let me just make sure. Reg. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I don't I don't wet my wood. Are we still talking about barbecue? <laughs> Yeah, I don't soak my wood, uh, Reg. It's it's a waste of time and energy. Um, so Alton said, uh, Franklin makes a pretty good brisket, but he's he isn't in my top three for Austin for sure. Not knocking him though. Uh, he's a great guy. Yo, definitely. You know, he's 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 paid his dues. Uh, all right, so Alton, I think we can agree there about Franklin. But yo, I mean, of the. And now my my scope or my you know the realm of brisket that I've had in Austin is limited, and I really can only go by the 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 folks or the the places where I had brisket from recently. And Franklin's was not one of those places. Valentino Valentina's is definitely up there. Um, uh, Louis Mueller's is definitely up there. Okay. And style switch. I had style switch, and and you know it was unfortunate because I went to Valentina's early that morning, and by the time I got to style switch, I was full, and I kind of forced myself to eat something, but I was just like, oh, I can't eat another. So I I, I kind of feel like I gave style switch an unfair shake, okay? But by the time we like farted around and did a whole bunch of other stuff, and then had to drive up to to Louis Mueller's, I was still full. Don't get me wrong, but like it was. It was a combination of the food that we had, the great conversation that we had, the company, Alton, of course, was one of those folks that was there. And I, ca I cannot thank Alton enough for taking time out of his, you know, day, his schedule, his life to host us. And we, we were there just about a year ago now. It was, it was February of last year, um, pre-pandemic. And, yo, it was such a, such a great, amazing time. If you haven't, Please check out the, I did a whole, I don't say a whole video series. It was all three videos, but I did videos while I was there in Texas. So if you haven't seen it, uh, please check it out. So Darnell says, I soak my wood chips sometimes when I'm using my electric smoker. That I will agree with. Um, the electric smoker, just, you know, so you don't have a fire in there or, you know, it's just one of those things where you kind of are, I won't say required, but it is recommended. Uh, Beast is not trying to knock him either, but there are people I would uh, go see before Franklin. Should. Yeah, definitely. Da, 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 da. Rick says Franklin's is good, but not worth standing in line for hours. Yeah. 
Uh, big just as review. I don't use mops, and I was laughing my ass off about the Bryans. Yeah, dude, man, we Victor has a way. Okay, Victor has a way. <laughs> Love Victor though. Vic, you know what? Victor calls me on my crap, which I appreciate, and he, you know, he is just like boop every now and again. He just pokes the bear, and it's like ah, okay. Victor, I don't know if you saw it, if you were paying attention or didn't pay attention, but I did talk about the potatoes. Yo, we had like a whole 20-minute dissertation on different types of potatoes, and I'm not going to talk anymore about potatoes or it'll start back up again. So if you didn't see the first 20 minutes or so of the live stream, I recommend you watch the replay and you will get a good kick out of it. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't, oh, oh, I'm sorry. It's probably because I'm holding my the the phone. I I apologize. I'm I'm I have my hand on the side of the phone where the microphone is, so it might be that. Um, prefers hands seven. Losers used to boil their ribs with liquid smoke and then finish them off in an electric grill. There's a reason they went out of business. Hey, can't you know what you know? Uh, sometimes it it's it's good to get teamed up on. Uh, my top three here, and not in order, is Curlin, Leroy, and Lou's, uh, Leroy and Lewis and Valentina's. Louis Mueller's? Louis Mueller's? Mueller? Mueller? Mm -mm -mm. Kent says, my top uh, three California briskets are from Memphis, Kansas City, and Texas. In no particular order. I'm telling you, I've had Texas brisket and I've also had Kansas City brisket. And I'm telling you, Kansas City brisket is up there. It's up there because of the burnt ends. The burnt ends, just like Kansas City burnt ends. Yo, if you've never been to Kansas City, I highly recommend it. You got to go to Gates. And when you go to Gates, just be, just expect to be yelled at as soon as you walk in the door. You know how there's greetings and then there's Gates. As soon as you walk in the door, you're like, "Hi, I may help you." And you're like, "What the? F Yo, I just walk in the door. Like, you getting accosted from behind the counter? Yo, can't you help the person in front of you? Why are you yelling at me? Like, you gonna make they they intimidate you to the point where you like, damn, do do I do I want to be in here or like what? Oh my gosh. Oh boy, see, they go out and. Skin potatoes, boiled potatoes, mashed potatoes, potatoes all rotten. What's going on, Gabriel? How you doing this evening? He says, what's up, Vato? Que te pasa, Vato? You, you, you okay, Holmes? <laughs> Mimi. She says, hey, Dash, everybody, late again. what I miss? You missed everything. Why did you even come in here so late? Why? No, <laughs> you didn't. You didn't miss much. We, you know, we we talked about potatoes. We talked about barbecue techniques. We talked about stocks for a quick second, and we talked about Alton, which doesn't take much to talk about Alton. You know, it's Alton. Um, Alton told me I was right for once. Usually, Alton argues me down, but you know, Alton said, "You know what? That dash, he's got a damn point. I agree with something he said." So, you, so Mimi, I'm just gonna tell you now, you're gonna wanna just just. Start this, start this over tomorrow or the next day when you have some time to just like when you're cleaning or when you're when you're driving and you you don't have to pay attention. Just 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 go ahead and start the replay and listen. I'm gonna say thank you in advance because I I know you and you're what? Yes, Johnny says uh, Dash is talking foolish now. No man, Kansas City just covers their stuff with sauce. Man, B. Y'all in Texas are be hating on barbecue sauce, but it's really not that bad. Like, when it's done properly, maybe you guys just don't know how to use barbecue sauce properly. Because I'm telling y'all be hating on barbecue sauce, and there's nothing wrong with using barbecue sauce. Right? You know how much hate y'all y'all hate on barbecue sauce like folks hate on lighter fluid. Really, y'all do. Uh Arthur Bryant's, yo. Arthur Bryant's definitely mean me. I will agree with you there. Arthur Bryant's burnt ends. I've had Arthur Bryant's. I've had Gates. I've had um, Oklahoma Joe's. Oh, my gosh. yo, Eric, what's going on? 
Actually, I did not get Oklahoma Joe's burnt ends because Oklahoma uh, Joe's only does burnt ends on certain days, and we were there on the wrong day. So, mad about that one. Uh, Kent says, can't wait to cook with Bill at the American Royal. Uh, by cook, I mean do his dishes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Alton, um, so uh, I am, I'm going to say proof, okay? But I, I took one of these 300 mils of caffeine earlier, so I preempted, right? I preempted, excuse me, I thought I was going to burp there. I preempted about an hour ago to help me, you know, to try and, and I was like, you know what? I always start the stream and I start drinking something and then I'll be like the whole time. How about if I drank it ahead of time and, and you know, got, got got ahead of it? So, I, I drank it ahead of time and, um, yeah, not yet. Double T's Texas Barbecue says, what up, Dash? At what temp would you put your cooked brisket in the Cambro? So, I'm going to cook, put cooked brisket in the Cambro when it gets down to 180 or, or 170, 180 degrees at the absolute most. Um, because the whole thing is, you want to have some some headroom between where you put it in and where it gets to the point where it's below that that safe temperature and that safe temperature is 140 degrees so you need to keep keep it above 140 uh, and what ends up happening is uh, when you put it into the camera it's going to lose some heat so you want to put it in higher than that 140 to maintain the temperature so that when it does drop a little bit you still have some headroom and it won't drop below 140 degrees, which is the the serve safe safe temperature. Um, that's another one of those. Ask me how I know. All right. Um, uh, Dash, pay no attention to Alton's uh, Dash was right comment. He was hacked for a hot minute. No, he wasn't. He was. He, no, he wasn't. See, I know Alton is in. I well, he's not in IT. Technically, you know, he does his his, his zap zap thing. But I know he's smarter than that. Ken. Out of all the folks in this chat, the one that, that will probably get hacked is from, you know, what is it, Ames, Luz? Where, where in Iowa is it? Hold on, hold on. Lamar's. I knew it was L something. In Lamar's, Iowa. Uh, Kent's password is probably something like, um, I love mama, I, you know, whatever you call your wife or something like that, you know. I, I love the old lady. You know, I was, like, I don't, I was just messing with you, but uh, barbecue sauce is just like fancy ketchup. B man, y'all be dude, dude, dude. Don't, don't, man. Just, just, yeah. This barbecue sauce is not that bad. It means you're talking foolishly now. No, Alton, I'm not. I'm telling you, y'all, y'all, just hmm. accept change. Accept change. <laughs> Johnny says, take whatever good you said about Dash back right now. No. What's going on, Steven? Oh, Steven. J Steven, yo, please tell Jacqueline that you and, and she are killing it, yo. I am I, 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 I'm digging the videos. I'm definitely digging, you know, the narrative. The way you do your videos is, is on par, okay? I know, I know, I know, Stephen. In the beginning, you were, you were. I won't say, I won't say afraid, but you were timid about talking on camera, and you know, you probably were worried a little bit about your accent and people not understanding. Dude, y'all are doing big things, big things. Okay, all right, my Trinity peoples, big things. Okay, and I know that's not a Trinidadian accent, but anyway, mm, you figure out where in the islands that was from. But dude, I'm, lo I'm digging it. Okay, I'm digging it. And, you know, nothing but positive vibes for you and to Jacqueline and, you know, Buddy, too, since he, he made a cameo in a video today. He was like, yo, what you doing? What you doing? What you doing? <laughs> Buddy was like, yo. Oh, man. Uh, Victor says, I caught the beginning of the potato talk. This season is going to be fun. Yes, indeed. So he got a yellow potato and some sweet potatoes. What's up? That nice. I will chip. Uh... <laughs> Rick says, I hate barbecue sauce, but I've been told I make a great one. Well, look, look, Rick, I, I you know, I, I don't hate pork. I just don't eat it, but I've been told that I my pork is pretty good. Um, you know, ribs, pulled pork, you know, 
other port things. <laughs> Alton says, I announce for now, I now renounce all positive feedback I ever gave Dash. Damn, homie. What? Really? Really, Alton? That my man said, I rebuke me in the name? <laughs> Damn. That hurt, Alton. Hurt. That hurt. I I wish I could sleep all day tomorrow. You know what's funny? I have a doctor's appointment first thing in the morning. And should I be drinking tonight? No. Should I be doing anything that I'm doing tonight? No. I mean, the good thing is I did my blood work a couple weeks ago. So when I go to the doctor, I'm gonna play dumb like, oh no, my my blood sugar has been averaging just under a hundred. Mm-hmm. My my A one C man, it should be like no no bull no bull. My A one C should be down under six and a half. Like I'm guessing, it's down under six and a half. So those of you guys who know what that means, you know, go ahead and leave some applause down in the chat for your boy. All right, I've been getting my sugar my my stuff together. But you know what? Every now and again, you want to have some candy, and damn it, I'm going to have some candy. And if I'm gonna have some candy and and chop it up with y'all, mm, 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 okay, mm. B says I do I do burnt ends for clients. I just season them and cook and give them their dipping sauce on the side. Okay. Oh my God, Alton, here's something else we agree on. Alton says, Alton says, okay, some more BS. Taking a brisket off the pit and immediately wrapping it in towels and putting it in the cooler. He says, the fuck, get out of here. Alton, you've heard me say this. That's dumb. That's dumb. <clears throat> you have to let your brisket cool. Because if you don't let your brisket cool, it's going to continue to cook. If you take a brisket or anything, okay, let's not just pick one brisket or anything for that matter, off of the cooker or off of your cooker and put it directly into something that's going to, <clears throat> to maintain that high temperature and not allow that temperature to drop, we could possibly be doing it wrong. And by could possibly, I mean you probably are. Uh, Bumpy says, thank Dash for the big up. Uh, how does everyone feel about Ashwood? Got some. It's good for heat, but uh, I can put, but can I put it on a smoker? And he says, also, reminder, hit the like button. So Ash is one of those things, um, Bumpy, I can't remember specifically about Ash, but I believe it's, you know, it's okay to cook with. It's just one of those things where it's kind of like, okay, it's Ash. Like, there's no big, oh... Like, it wasn't very memorable. How about that? Um, can you cook with it? I do believe so. Is it going to leave a memorable flavor or, you know, anything like you're going to be blown away from? I don't think so. So just be prepared for that. <laughs> Kent says, Dash, I gave my passwords to hackers and they said, no. Uh, they said, no, thank you. Steven says, smash the thumbs up, y'all. Mr. Richard, how you doing this evening? The thing is, we like barbecue sauce here. The problem is why in the hell would you spend 12 to 16 hours making a masterpiece and then cover it in sauce? Barbecue sauce is an, an, an accompaniment. All right, so Alton, to me, if you spend 12 to 16 hours cooking something, that's too long. Um, but there are things, and again, the, the, that's just the difference in, in I, I told you, and I've said this before, when growing up for me, barbecue chicken was not chicken that was cooked on a grill, right? And that's the difference in location and, and how I was raised, let's put it that way. Barbecue chicken for me was chicken, again, just, just hear me out and I'm telling you, this doesn't make it right or this doesn't make it wrong. This was what it was to me before I became enlightened, okay? Barbecue chicken was chicken that was cooked in the oven in barbecue sauce all right that was barbecue chicken and barbecue in the northeast okay the mid-atlantic and, and the northeast is and still is something that has barbecue sauce in and or on it okay and that's the difference between down there in texas versus up where i'm from 
okay? So barbecue sauce to me, it, it holds a special place in my heart because that's how I was raised and you, it, there's no telling me different, okay? And I'm going to fall on my sword about barbecue sauce because it's not bad, all right? Um, 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 and I can't, or I, I can't reply to you whatever negative comment or whatever you have to say because I got candy in my mouth. Mm. Steven, thank you, man. You are contributing to the cause. Um, Gabriel says, just got through making dinner. Had some leg quarters. Nice. Uh, there knows that Dash, you should come down to the 21st and join me in my remixes for a whole hog night. Um, Actually, I think I'm going to be away that week from the 18th to the 27th or something like that. Whatever the, those dates are. Um, sorry. My wife and I both will be um, vaccinated at that point, And we're like, we're getting the hell up out of Dodge. We're going away. So it, it could most likely, it definitely will, will be in and around that area. We're going away for a week. Uh, B says it's a condiment, not an ingredient. Uh Matt was says, I don't put barbecue sauce on my brisket. Neither do I. I put barbecue sauce on ribs, brisket, and chicken. Uh, well, chicken wings, I do put some barbecue sauce in or on, or I mix it in with my pulled chicken as well as my pulled pork. But I, it's the, my my pulled pork and my chicken is not swimming in sauce. Like, you, like some people, you know, they have like a sauce, like a two-to-one sauce to meat ratio. That's not me. <laughs> I was just says, I rebuke me in the in the name of good barbecue. <laughs> yeah, right, B. Who who puts barbecue sauce on brisket? Um yo, man. I just had an appointment last week and was A one C and six point five. Well big up, Alton. That's what's up, dog. I know you know. What flavor was that candy? So these are watermelon, uh like the candy watermelon, like the watermelon slices or whatever. Yeah, yo, sweet and sour, mm-hmm, a whole bunch of carbs up in here, but, um, um, screw it, um, you know, one night a week I cheat, and I cheat with y'all, thank you, Jimmy knows what's up, mm. First love, what's going on? Jimmy says, uh, time to hit that thumbs up button if you haven't already. Even at the restaurants, uh, we could wait till the brisket temp hit 160 before putting in the Cambros. Okay. Love me some good ash. <laughs> Cricket chirping. <laughs> Look, Alton. Dude. See, this is the thing that you guys don't get. Like, there's a lot of folks who who crap, who bash on different types of woods. You have, and where you are, the prevalence of good smoking woods trumps your ability to say, this is what I was given, this is what I have to use, and I have to deal with it. It's just like being given a crap car, and you're like, ride in this crap car or take the bus. I'm going to ride in this crappy car, okay? Same thing. I'm dealt a crap hand of, like, I'm going to say crap, but, like, less than desirable wood, okay, if you will. Just humor me, and I'm going to cook with it so that I'm still cooking with wood and I'm going to get some smoke flavor. Is it the best smoke flavor? No, but don't don't yuck when someone else is young is what, you know, what I'm trying to say. Those of you guys who have the prevalence that of woods that just like are phenomenal, y'all don't know the struggle of just getting anything you can get. Uh, I'm not even gonna read that, Alton. Uh, have you tried smoking burgers, brisket burgers, and then uh, grilling them, or have you tasted them that way? Saw Leroy and Lewis do it and got inspired to try it. So I cannot say that I have. Uh, usually I'm cooking burgers hot and fast. I don't. I've never smoked a, um, a burger. Da, 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 da. 
<laughs> B says Texas is the right way. Mm, whatever. Y'all funny. Rick says grill and ribs? Question mark? Nah, man. Hey, I like chicken cooked in the oven covered in barbecue sauce. And, and that's exactly it, Darnell. See, the whole thing is... They they just different, man. They they like, nah, man, that's the wrong way. I'm never gonna do that. Man, have you tried it? Have you tried it? Uh, Darnell says, hi, 27th is my birthday. Well, yeah, we we're going away for a week, um, towards the the end of next month. Um, so I'm not 20 minutes behind in the chat. I am two minutes behind. Thank you very much. And I'm about to catch up. Did I see? Yes, indeed. Look at that. This Uncle Steve. How you doing this evening, sir? Uh, Eric says, the biggest compliment you can give me is when a guest say, that's uh, so good. It doesn't need barbecue sauce. Agreed. Uh, and you know what? I tell you, uh, my brisket, you know, folks folks want to put barbecue sauce on it. I don't provide any barbecue sauce, sauce when I'm doing brisket and things like that. I um, like If I'm selling something to a customer, I'm like, listen. Just try it without the barbecue sauce. Or try it without putting anything on it. Excuse me, first. But there are those people that are just like, I put sauce on everything. Yo, taste tester number one is like this. He puts sauce on everything. It drives me absolutely crazy. And I did not raise him that way. That is just something he does. He wants to put a sauce on everything. I doubt he's still here. He was here earlier. But... He puts a damn sauce on everything. He does too much on everything he cooks. And it's like, bro, keep it simple. Like, you don't need to do that. Um, I smoke some meatloaf. All right. So, Gabriel, I, you know, I, I enjoy some. I don't, I don't like meatloaf, one. I do like when, or I did like when I smoked meatloaf. But, you know, I, I've talked about this before. My wife said that I smoke meatloaf and, and my smoked meatloaf isn't meatloaf. Like it's a, a like a dumbed down or a gussied up meatloaf. And she's like, it's too much stuff. Just so I'm, I'm giving grief about taste testing number one, putting too much stuff and stuff. But because I don't like meatloaf, I want it to have a better flavor. Like I will make, I will like cut up some peppers and some onions and I'll put them into a meatloaf and, and, and smoke that. Put that in your meatloaf and smoke it. Yes, yes, please. Okay, um, like just straight meat, and nah, man, I I'm, I don't get down with meatloaf. Uh, Victor says I don't finish an oven. I now finish cooking in a cooler. Uh, interior temperatures will remain above 160 for at least five hours. Perfectly tender. All right. Da, 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 da. Ken, or Eric says that I love smoked meatloaf. I do too. I didn't. I'm not a fan of meatloaf, but I, I like smoked meatloaf. Why do you call it hot and fast burgers? Uh, this is grilling. Are you saying there's a difference? Yes, Johnny. I am. I'm stating that hot and fast is not barbecue. That's grilling, and I agree. We agree. Let's, let's don't, don't go there, Johnny. Don't don't. Oh, go there, Johnny. Sorry, if I'm, I'm like I'm holding my hand on the side of my phone case, and <clears throat> don't go there, Johnny. Hey, Alton, um, you know, asking Uncle Steve is he sending Kent a pic of of him and Speedos? You know, uh, Alton, that Uncle Steve is big into swimming, so I wouldn't put it past him to have pictures in Speedos. So be careful what you wish for. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Steven says, dang it, I got me a bag of Western Post Oak Chunks. I must be close to Texas. Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, sauciest. Uh, saucest. <laughs> My son has to have ketchup on everything. Ugh, I know. I feel like you shouldn't need sauce for good food, but I still like it. Be gentle, y'all. Double G. Double D gets booted from the chat. <laughs> First Love says, okay, I need sauce on ribs. I agree. I agree. To me, yo, anytime I've ever had ribs, like back in the day and stuff like that, you know, like ribs to me came with some sauce on them. Like you put sauce on ribs. 
It is only a, a recent occurrence have I cooked ribs with no sauce. And that's only because I have, of the other four people in this house that I'm usually cooking, excuse me, ribs for, two of them are like, Daddy, I don't like sauce. And I'm like, okay, I won't put sauce on stuff. But everybody else is like, it's so funny. Taste test to number two and three. If I put sauce on something, they're like, I don't want to eat that. That's sauce. Taste test to number two will we'll deal with it depending on how hungry he is. Taste test to number three be like, taste test to number one be like, Daddy, um, can you put more sauce on it next time? I, I can't win. I can't win. Oh, Darnell said barbecue chicken in the oven with big slices of onions mixed in. Bruh, I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, Brother Young says my son will put hot sauce on barbecue. Man, I like hot sauce. I like hot sauce. Like, only thing that I will, I'm going to say blindly, but put hot sauce on almost all the time is fish. Um, hey, uh, Kent, don't worry about when my meat loaves, okay? All right, just... Don't worry about that. Or or I'm going to personally make sure that Uncle Steve sends you some pictures of him in the Speedo. Uh, salt and pepper ribs tonight. Yep, no sauce. By the way, Dash, did you see the pics I posted on salt and pepper ribs? On this? No, I did not. Um, I haven't been on Instagram uh, this evening. Like, I posted something on Instagram earlier, and that was about it. Um, B-E-N-N-E-R. Uh, so, <laughs> Eric... Uh, he's still waiting to get his uh, insulated vertical smoker. Hot fast is not always grilling. Oh, man. This is going to be a debate that that, that Alton and I are going to have until, you know, un until there, there will be no other debate. That is like the top level debate for us. Um, need to try the Texas Trinity on them ribs. Uh, Steve being big in the swimming, he's a, <laughs> and it's an understatement. Yes, sir. Um, hey, Bumpy, be easy, man. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, you know what you need to do? Y'all need to take a shot together, good brother. Bumpy, put him to bed. Knock his butt out. Hmm. Rick says, is there such a thing as low and slow burgers? Yep, it's called smoked meatloaf. Darnell says, Rick, when, uh, can I play some order uh, that we talked about? Yep, yep, yep. That's some hot, fast hot dogs. Yes. Sure do. Anytime I'm grilling. I don't do hot and fast barbecue. I don't. It's grilling. Um... Ooh, Uncle Steve, shoot, you getting me hot and bothered talking about a little shower pose. What? Oh, man. He going to set some shake and something to shake. <laughs> I like the Jack barbecue sauce. Uh, habanero, okay. Jank. Uh, I was just, I'm just trying to understand how you can go from your lips to tell people that you've been doing cop cooking forever and, it, and they don't cook hot and fast. I think hot and fast is grilling. I, I think the difference between barbecue and grilling is the temperature. That's it. Hot and fast to me is grilling. I've that I stand behind that. You you know as well as I do, I've been saying the same thing since we've been having this discussion probably a good year and a half, almost two years now, Alton. Hot and fast, grilling. That's it. What's up, Phil? He says hello, Dash and chat. What's going on with you this evening, Phil? How's everything? It would, yeah, <laughs> it would help if I spelled his name right. That's why I was like, B-E-N-N-E-R. Uh, it's okay, just me, or does it sound like the theme song from The Crying Game is playing in here? No, nah, man. Weather's changing when you're getting back in the garage. Uh, you know, it's crazy. I had, So, one of the things you guys have to understand, I usually cook in a garage when I have a bigger cook. I have not been doing big cooks. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen what's going on in the world, but I've been doing briskets here and there, like one brisket, one brisket, one brisket. Like this, this weekend coming up is Easter. Normally, I have Easter orders. I have two orders for Easter, 
and they will be accomplished with one brisket. Now, I'm not advertising that I'm cooking either, but people who want food, they have been reaching out to me. So I have a, a standing, like, you know, one of my subscribers, and she, she comes in on live stream every now and again. She is not only um, a, a customer, a supporter. Okay, I don't like to say customer. I like to say supporter. She's not only a supporter, but she's a subscriber, and she watches the videos from time to time, and she's on the live streams from time to time. And she has like a standing holiday order. So I know I know she's gonna order three pounds of brisket. I just almost always put her down for at least three pounds of brisket. Um first love says, okay, I have to ask this. So when someone hot fast brisket, would that be grilling? That just drops the cooking time by some hours, but uh still hours to cook. First love, okay. My personal opinion is that that would be grilling. I believe that the difference between barbecue and, and and grilling is the temperature. Okay, that that's how I feel. Okay, that that is my. Now, can I be swayed? Are there exceptions? Yes and yes. Okay. So Rick says hot and fast is grilling. I gotta say yes if it's over a direct fire. That's what Alton says to me. Again, this is to me my personal opinion. Grilling is a higher temperature. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Darnell says Uncle Steve is low key an exhibitionist. Maybe not low key. Double D says much love, y'all. Gotta go. Looking forward. Uh, gotta go. Looking forward to some more videos. Actually, nope, not yet, not yet, not yet. Um, be easy, Double D. Uh, Phil says I can't wait to see how you use the uh, put it to use. Okay. Uh, all right, so I'm all caught up in the chat. Uh, you know, the dash believes the thermometers as what is barbecue and what is not. Um, it's an East Coast thing, you wouldn't understand if that's how you want to play it, sure. Um, but okay, I mean, I have not been doing barbecue as long as you have, Alton, but I am also a little younger than you, so that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. All right, old man. Uh, anyway, um, how about them Eagles? <laughs> oh, man. Alton, you know I'm coming back down that way. Yeah. And when I do, I'm going to make sure you know. Uh, we definitely got to get up. Uncle Steve says, I'm confident with my dad bod. That's what's up, Uncle Steve. That That's... That's big confidence energy right there. I, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, Eric says, my temp gauge says smoke grill sear on it. There's no such thing as a Philly cheesesteak. It's just a damn cheesesteak. Oh, man. I love it when Alton comes and joins the, the live stream. Said no one ever. <laughs> Captain Newbie says, I'm still going to buy more sins. Yo, I, as am I. Now, I, I, I'm I, not balling like some some folks, okay? And I, like I, I told you, I have a periodic reinvestment. Every time I get paid, I throw $50 in my Chase account. And, um, like, I will buy a few shares of SENS when I do. Alton, it's just a cheesesteak, okay? You can feel these NUTs, okay? It's just a cheesesteak. Uh... <laughs> Kent says next time I'm in Texas I'm going to violate Barbecue Boulevard well Kent I hate to be the bearer of bad news but you got our sloppy seconds because we already been there and done that okay we was all up in the Barbecue Boulevard all up all, all up in it <laughs> uh, uh, no Brian they didn't and po' boys are typically made of seafood. Hey, Alton, please, please, please do not threaten me with a good time. Hey, Uncle Steve, man, thank you so very much. You definitely be be easy, sir. I definitely appreciate everything you've done, not only for me, but everybody around here. Uh, how do you feel about vinegar base? Well, anything. I'm not a fan of vinegar. Um, 
I, I again, am not a fan of vinegar. I don't... Uh, only thing that I will use or have a vinegar base with is a salad dressing. That is about it. Um, Vinegar-based barbecue sauce, I'm, I'm not a fan. Like, I just... That's not my thing. But... There are some people who really like vinegar. Um, it's just not my cup of tea. Ken says, I'm good with that sloppy second. <laughs> Captain Newbie says, I like the cheesesteak from, uh, from Frozen Boxes at Restaurant Depot. Okay. You, uh, uh, and I... We got some... Um, some steaks like some shaved ribeye from Lidl and the, the shaved ribeye from Lidl is actually pretty darn good you'll never see me make a video on it but uh that is something that we will we will do here but I'm not nope I'm not making a video on it I managed my own portfolio I'm heavy into the stock game that's what's up uh <laughs> Johnny says vinegar equals yuck so, Johnny, one of the things that I almost say I preach, but I talk about, and, and I'm a firm believer, don't yuck someone else's yum, okay? Just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's yuck. It just means that you don't like it, all right? Um, you know, I like certain things that, that you guys don't. I mean, there's straight, I mean, talking about barbecue sauce versus no barbecue sauce is fighting words up in here, okay? But just because I don't mind barbecue sauce, and I will say I'm a fan, but I am not opposed to barbecue sauce, okay? Them, them is fighting words to some of you guys here in this chat, especially to some of you guys who are in or are from or around that great state of Texas. Oh, <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. I uh, like that chopped barbecue from the Carolinas. Haven't had it since I was a kid, though. I do. So, Alton, you know, so, Alton, you go to the Carolinas and in North Carolina, South Carolina, and I believe more North Carolina than South Carolina, but you go to the Carolinas and, and you go somewhere and, and you, you look on the menu and they say, oh, we have barbecue. Oh, okay. What do you have? You know, I'm like, all right, you got some brisket, you got some ribs, you got some chicken. They're like, no, we got barbecue. And and he, if someone says it like this, barbecue, just knows pulled pork. And it's not pulled pork, it's minced pork. That's that chopped is minced. Because they chop it up like a typewriter. Use two cleaver. And it's minced. Okay? Minced. Minced pork. Minced pork shoulder or minced whole pull, you know, whole pig is is pulled pork to a whole nother degree of I don't know. It's just extra. But I we were where were we? We were we were driving south to South Carolina. We were going to Myrtle Beach and this was one of the first times I we were driving down there and we were in North Carolina and I saw this place called Cookout. And Cookout is a fast food chain, right? And I had heard so much about Cookout. I have friends that went to school in North Carolina. So a couple friends that went to school at NCCU and and uh, uh, North Carolina a &T. And yo, they talked, they talked, they talked, they talked, they talked about this spot called Cookout, right? And I'm like, yo, I, it's a Cookout. I'm looking at my wife like, yo, can we stop at Cookout? I wanna get Cookout. Folks been talking about cookout forever. Man, we go and we stop at the cookout and it like you see the signs and they be like barbecue. It's just BBQ. Cookout. We have barbecue. Okay. I go to cookout and I'm in a drive through line and I'm like, okay, I see burgers. I see hot dogs. Pull pork or, or minced pork. Hey, hi, how you doing today? Um, can you tell me what barbecue you have? Ah, the pork, we got the, the barbecue, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, no, 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 like, barbecue. Like, what what barbecue do you have? Ah, the, 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 the minced pork, the, the, the chopped pork, that's, that's the barbecue. So you don't have any brisket? Nah, we got barbecue. But that's not barbecue. 
Now nah, that, that that's barbecue. That's what we had. We had a barbecue. You don't have any beef ribs? Nah, nah, nah. Beef? You want beef? Yes, I I want some beef ribs or some beef brisket. Well, we had burgers. You got flame grilled burgers, kind of like Burger King. Yeah, yeah, but you know we we got the barbecue. You want barbecue? We had barbecue. That's not barbecue. That's not barbecue. That's pulled pork. That's it. It's pulled pork. Do not be. Mm, anyway. Ah, Eric says. Um, well, let's go back. Uh, Gabriel says, love pickled red onions. Yes, indeed. I actually, um, am a fan of pickled red onions. Alton turned me on to pickled red onions, and I have been making pickled red onions every now and again for a year now, the better part of a year. Eric says, back on topic, I love certain proteins that I like to sear, then smoke, and others that I like to reverse sear, smoke, then sear. Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, Daddy Cook says, Phil says, I'm not a fan of vinegar-based sauces either. Keep that stuff for, whoa, yep, uh-huh. <laughs> First Love says, I love this place. I live in North Carolina and vinegar-based everything. It is sickening. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Uh, so, Jimmy says, you have to be raised with vinegar-based to love it. Yep, it's because you don't know any. I mean, yep, mm -hmm. you have to be raised that way. You know what's so funny? Every now and again, when somebody does something, you're just like, mm, they was just raised different. Bless their heart. They was raised different. That's exactly how I feel about vinegar. Um, poor boys aren't always just seafood. Yeah. Nah, man. I'm just saying, the po boys. If you talk about a po' boy, okay, the majority of po' boys are going to be seafood-based. Uh, Darnell is waiting on the Instacart IPO. What was supposed to IPO this week? Something was supposed to IPO this week or last week, and I was like, I was supposed to keep an eye on it, and I went to write it down, and I totally forgot. Laura's back. Welcome. Captain Newbie says, so it makes a pace. Yeah, man. Uh Whole hog meets two clearers. Yep. And it says, hey, old Dash, I want to graduate this summer from a pellet grill to a charcoal cooker. I'm looking into the Weber Kettle, Weber Smoky Mountain, or some type of Kamado. Any thoughts for a beginner? So, and you know what I was thinking about the other day? Because I get a lot of people to ask questions about this. And I want to do a pros and cons versus. And I want to do a pros and cons and talk about each of the different grills and smokers. Um, So, the pro of a Weber Kettle is, is it'll get up to temperature quickly. You can do a lot of different things with the purchase, additional purchase of some accessories um, versus the the the, the uh, Kamado. The, the Kamado is good at low and slow cooks or is good at very high heat cooks. There isn't like a middle ground. And, you know, I feel there, there isn't a middle ground. You kind of have to do one or the other, because if if the grill goes hotter than you need it to be, it's hell. It's hell trying to get it to come back down to a temperature and when you and, and you know also on the, on the converse of that if you get it too hot it can be too hot and you could actually crack that ceramic if you get the damn thing too hot so and the kettles like i i tell you you know I, i've said it recently i understand why people love weber kettles so much or kettle grills period i won't always say the weber kettles but the weber kettles are built to last um, and, uh, it's just one of those things where with the right accessories and, or some ingenuity, the Weber kettles, the possibilities are endless. The only con about the Weber kettle is real estate. So there's, there, like I said, there's pros and cons. Um, <laughs> first love says Eastern Carolina is Miss Vinegar Bay's barbecue. Cook out with someone else's yum. Yeah, you're absolutely correct, uh, Johnny. De definitely correct. It's, it's not mine. And and that's not my thing. And when I say I was thoroughly disappointed, I was like shattered, thoroughly disappointed. I think when I, I went to cook out, I ended up getting a freaking hot dog and a milkshake. Like I was so blown. Like I'm looking for barbecue and they're like, ah, oh, well, we got barbecue. That That's not barbecue. 
Uh, born and raised in North Carolina. <laughs> First love. This is born and raised in North Carolina. Cookout is the most overrated fast food I've ever eaten at. Darnell says the cookout sucks, especially the one in College Park. Man, there's a cookout in College Park. Man, that goes to show how often or not often I'm in cookout. Uh, let's talk brisket. I buy choice brisket. Do you buy choice select or prime and why? So Chad, I'm going to buy what's available and what fits my bill. So if I have like this past weekend, I had an order for, it was for five pounds of brisket and I went and I was like, all right, well, and, and this is usually, this is the order of, of operations. Okay. I'll go to restaurant depot and I'm sorry, I, I keep doing this. I have a mustache hair that's tickling my nose and I'm trying to get it to lay down. I, I need to trim my mustache because it's like, like, I feel like Samantha from Bewitched when she's like, dee, 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 dee. you know, like I can't do it, but she's like, dee, dee, dee. it's tickling my nose just enough. Anyway, my order of operations when I'm getting brisket is I go to the restaurant depot. If I can't find one I need at restaurant depot, I'll go to Sam's. If I can't find what I need at Sam's, I'll go to Costco. Now, the difference between Sam's and Costco is Costco only sells what I believe is only prime briskets. So that's why they're last on the list because the prime brisket is going to cost me more money, therefore lower profit. Step, Take a step back. I'm going to explain this one backwards. Sam's. If I need to go to Sam's to buy other meats, so if I'm going to buy chicken or from basically if I'm going to buy chicken, if I need some chicken wings or some whole chickens or some boneless skinless breasts or boneless skinless thighs, to kill two birds with one stone, I might purchase a brisket from Sam's. Sometimes, or certain Sam's has prime briskets only. Certain Sam's has choice and or prime briskets. So the determination is, is contingent upon what they have. But my go-to is usually Restaurant Depot choice briskets, okay? Um, yeah, choice briskets. And actually, I take that back. Actually, I believe my go-to is a select brisket and choice is the next grade up. So I think I get select briskets. I have not found a vast difference between a choice and a select or a choice and a, um, or is it choice select then prime? I, I, the grades, uh, anyway, I will get the, I don't say the, the bottom tier, the lower tier brisket and cook that first or prefer to cook that first because it's cost me less money. The taste is gonna be about the same. You're not going to know the difference between a prime and a choice brisket or a choice and a select brisket or, or the, the different grades, prime being higher or better. Uh, really, you're not. Um, and I, I profit more off of the lesser grade. The only exception to that is a halal brisket. The halal, the grading on halal is just, it's like two rungs lower. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in North Carolina, and I am not a cookout fan. That's what's up, Phil. See, you know, I, I, it's not just me, all right? Uh, I'm telling you, though, some people love it, and, you know, that, that's that's you. I'm not a fan. Uh, Captain Newbie says, deceived by the barbecue. <laughs> B says, when I do a barbecue, I do the same thing, you know, um, and on Sundays, uh, Corn Pop would would come with the sauce and he was a bad dude and he would rub my hair <laughs> up and down in the pool to put the sauce on his brisket. Yeah, well, do what you do. And Alton, you know what? I, I understand and you know what? I, I, listen, I was raised differently, okay? That's all I got to say. I was raised differently. Uh, country Western and Kicker Music, okay. Hey, got, a, got an ounce? Okay. I, he forgot the B. Uh, that's how tired he is. Can't be easy, man. Uh, A-R-K-X. What is that? What is A-R-K-X? Control T. Let's see. Let's see. Sorry. Give me a second, y'all. I gotta, gotta do some some stock sleuthing. KX. Is that what you said? ARKX. This is no results. Uh, oh, wait. Arc Space Explor Exploration. Who is that? Five days. 
All right, it started at 20 or so and is at $20.50. put we're going to add that to the watch list. Just to keep an eye on it. I'll be mad in a couple weeks. Like, damn it. <laughs> um, hey, Johnny, I appreciate you hanging out. It says, I have to turn in early tonight. Good night. It was fun. Take care. You too. Uh, Johnny says, good night, everyone. Uh, we always say, even a broken clock is right twice a day. Sure enough, Jimmy. I say that often. Uh, NVIS ran today in the market and went from 11 to 19 a share. All right, look at that. I have some shares in M uh, NVIS or there's a guy I watch on YouTube. He calls it Mavis. Um, let's see. F-I-D-E-L. Fidelity. I threw some I threw, I threw a little bit of change out of Fidelity because Fidelity allows you to trade OTC. And I was like, uh, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to try that. Though I got burnt on uh, was it HCMC? I think that's what it was. So I haven't even looked at my Fidelity account. Yeah, look at that. I, I did do some. Holy cow. MVI, uh, MVIS Microvision did run up today. Huh, I have a gain, uh, just a gain today of $3.25 or 32% uh, total gain. So it was down. And it's one of those things where I, I might need to go ahead and, and get out. Um, but Derna went up 10% today. Um, UAMY, uh, United States Animony, up 6% today but when I'm down 20 some odd percent that, that doesn't do much of anything um, yeah and then uh, you know the, H, the, the, the OTC stuff uh, yeah I, I'm just like ah. but you know it's, it's 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 a thing right so I'm like ah, you know penny stocks or less than a penny stocks or fractional penny stocks I'm like okay I think I threw, I threw twenty five dollars at it, and I'm down sixty two percent. I'm down ten dollars out of twenty five. Yeah. Let's see. First love says my last grill uh, will be a flat top that will make five total. Man, no, there is never a last grill. Um. So what do you charge people for brisket? Uh, um, I'm at about one hundred forty dollars right now for a whole brisket. Um, and my whole brisket, I, I try to shoot for about a 15 pound brisket. And um, by the time it's all told, the cooked brisket, brisket is gonna be about eight pounds. And um, I'm charging 140 bucks for a whole brisket. Uh, B says, I like choice Angus for day to day. It's consistency. I do primes, but they are special orders. All right. Can you dry age a brisket? And is there a difference in flavor? So first love, uh, I have seen folks dry age brisket. And I won't say I didn't see the point. But so this is one of those things where the person I saw who dry aged the brisket was one of these people who does these like over, over dramatic and sensationalized thumbnails. And I vowed to never click on one of the videos. I was talking to them uh, because they were in a, a a group chat that I was in. And, you know, I, I said to him, I said, I'm like, dude, you got to stop with the clickbait thumbnails. And he's like, nah, they're, they're working for me. And I'm like, oh, really? Um, they're working for you. You're getting like two to three hundred, two to five hundred views on the video. But they're working for you. Oh, oh. Like, listen, dude. The people who you want to watch your videos are going to get tired of your those clickbait thumbnails. Like, just show them what you're doing, and 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 if you build it, they will come. One of those type deals. And he was like, "I'm gonna keep doing it the way I'm doing it." Okay, no problem. Unsubscribe. In other news, <laughs> uh, cab briskets are really good. Cab? What the hell is a cab? to cook out twice in one trip oh gosh uh, 
Dustin Dustin says I'm in the Midwest and I'm wanting to try something different from my barbecue to make it my own. I've heard that corn cobs have been used for adding smoke. Has anyone ever heard of this? Uh, Dustin, I can neither neither confirm nor deny. Um, but like you gonna put like a whole corn like kernels on the cob into your fire? What the hell is a cab? Darnell says those OTC, OTC stocks, uh, you have to day trade, swing trade, you have to catch the trading patterns. Yep. Alton, they're not steamed. And they're not always, like, there are times when I do prime briskets, but yes. But Alton, see, the difference is what I pay for brisket versus what you pay for brisket. You're paying a dollar per pound less than what I'm paying for brisket. Um, the entire market has been now lately able to recover. News. Yes. Uh, so I did see that, and I'm like, um, I might have to pick up some, you know, yo, dude, I'm mad. Tilray, <clears throat> somebody told me about Tilray when it was at like $5. And I was like, what the hell is Tilray? And I'm like, weed. Like, ah, I'm going I'm to I'm keep keep it on my list. And pff, I, I slipped. For sure. Uh, T-L-R-Y, if you guys are looking for the ticker. Tilray right now is at $22. I, let's see. Holy cow. I saw when Tilray shot up to 65 I was like, oh my gosh, like, like, whoa, whoa. So let's see. Like I said, I watched Till Ray. It was about March, April of last year. And it was about $5 when somebody first said something to me about it. And I didn't watch it. And I didn't, I didn't, I just, I just, oh man, you know. And so that's one of those things where, when you don't know, you don't know. And I was still still new. I've only been investing for a year. I just hit my, my one-year anniversary about two weeks ago. And, man. Mm. I want to build a barbecue technique where 10 people sit at it and cook their own with an overhead uh, trains of spices and utensils. Okay. Uh Certified Angus beef. Okay. Um, so I don't know if I guess I don't know if the briskets I do or have access to are Angus or not. B says I charge $150 a brisket, but your brisket, what you're cooking is also bigger than what I'm cooking. You're cooking like 20 pound briskets, so there's there's that to factor in too. Uh, Jimmy is looking at uh, Glaxo Smith Klein GSK for dividends. I have uh, gotten to the point where I am also uh, probably three quarters of the of the stocks that I have. All right, actually, this is a good one to to keep an eye on because if they offer dividends and are under forty dollars a share, I'm I'm with it. Um, my problem is my main portfolio is with Chase and they only offer whole share purchases. GSK. Oh man, look at that. Like so Smith Klein. We're going to put that on the watch list. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ooh, 3583 versus uh, GSK. Come on. So they're up a little bit in the after hours. But what's crazy, um, just typing in GSK revealed Green Sky, which is who holds my mortgage. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at them too. Let's watch them. Um, and I'm going to take a look at them for sure. And they're down. Green Sky is. Most people say that they have a sell rating. I like discount stocks, though. Like, stocks 
under $20. That's those those are my wheelhouse right now cuz I don't have a whole bunch of money to invest. Uh Beast's cab is Canadian. Dry aged is overrated first love, B says. I made some cash on canopy growth before it dropped. Yeah, well, I so my whole thing Alton is um canopy like oh man, the weed stocks I just kind of been like, eh, I don't know. But as more places are legal as legalizing things and more uh, marijuana is becoming more and more legal, I don't have any, like some people have, uh, like, I, I don't know how to say it, um, personal reasons why they don't want to invest in weed or, you know, their jobs might feel some type of way if they invest in marijuana. Like, why would I'm doing what I'm with my money? Would, would that affect my job? But anyway, I digress. Um, I did put some money in, uh, I can't remember who it was, but it was like a quick flip and I put some money in and I, like I gained about 15, 20%, but I, when I say 15, 20%, I'm only throwing like for gambling stocks, I'm only going to throw like 25 to $50 at it just because again, I'm, I'm, I ain't balling. I'm not there yet. Um, I'm, I'm still building my portfolio. In the year, I've taken my portfolio from what it was, and I've I'm almost tripled it. I haven't tripled it yet. Almost tripled it between the um interest not earn interest, but between the earnings that I've gotten and the um the periodic investing. So, you know, I'm not there yet, but I'm getting there. Um, so yeah, I, I'm just being patient. That's all. Uh, just big cash for a new truck. Didn't even know. Nice, baby. That's what's up. I loaded up on a penny stock that does cannabis good packaging. Oh, good packaging. Just tuck it aside for the long haul and see what happens. Bought forty thousand shares at eight cents. Yeah. Um. After we talked about that, what was the ticker on that one? Because I remember you were talking about it, and when we talked about it last, it was like you bought it at eight cents and it was at like forty cents or something like that. What was this ticker or ticker on that one? Sundial around a dollar ten trade out at a dollar thirty. Um, same pattern every few days. Yeah. So I've been leery about Sundial though because Sundial is is like boom boom boom. So actually, I made some money on um, with AMC. I, I I didn't. I mean, I lost some money on GameStop. Uh, I I told you I took some money and I was like ah, I'm gonna throw some money at it. So I I put some money in in AMC. And it, if it dropped, I was like, yo, I'm holding, I'm holding, I'm holding, I'm holding, I'm or, or hodl, okay? I'm holding. And when it recovered, I was like, ah, and I didn't, I didn't jump out immediately. My $1,700 investment got up to $2,200, $2,300, and I was like, I'm going to wait one more day, and I, yo, I was like, fuck. So the good thing is, I set a trailing stop loss, um, so it sold me out, and I was like, damn it. The only problem was my trailing stop loss was, I set it to 7% or 8%. It dropped down to 8.5% and then went back up. So I got out, got forced out, had to buy back in. I bought back in at lower shares, and then I recovered some of my money back, and then I, I, I sold out again, did the same thing, stop trade or, or was trailing stop loss. And I'm like, okay, I'm like, I'm, I'm still in the green, I'm, or I'm still in the black, right? I'm like, all right, you know what? Screw this. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out of AMC. I'm out. Right? I'm out. I got out of AMC and I'm like, all right, well, I got back in. <laughs> I took 1900 or almost two grand and I got back in. And then I dropped down to like 1800 1750 1800 I said, listen, I'm not, I'm not going to. I'm going to set my stop loss and again, another trailing stop loss. And I'm going to make sure that I do not lose. At least my initial investment, and I'm like, all right. So I, I, I took pulled everything out. Now this is through uh, Robinhood. So I pulled everything out of AMC, and I was like, all right. OLN. Okay, if you do not know who OLN is, OLN is the umbrella or the parent company of Winchester. Winchester makes Freedom uh, pellets. Okay, Freedom pellets or the pew pew pellets, and I was like, that's who I'm investing in. So I threw some money in OLN. 
Well, guess what? I threw money into OLN on the wrong day. It dropped 5%. I was like, son of a gun. But then like two days later, it came back up 10%. And I was like, okay, all right, you good. You good, OLN. Thank you. Thank you. And I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to take my profits. And I was at right, right back at about two grand. And I said, I'm out. I'm out. And I said, nope, I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and do what I need to do. And I said, it's much better for me to pay off like a credit card debt or like buy something tangible. Um, and yeah. Uh, no, the places that people know. It's, uh, so Alton says 14 pounds, but yeah. So B says his briskets are 17 to 20 pounds cooked. So I, there's a little bit of a discrepancy there. Uh, trying to put a little bit of money, just 10 or so shares of two, three dollar stocks just to expand. Exactly. And that's my thing, Captain Nimby. Like, I know better. Like, I can't afford to buy. Like, I've bought, you know, I have onesie twosies shares. Like, I have one share of Apple because I'm like, oh man, I need something that will pay dividends and just like be a long term hold. But I mean, at $120 or $22 or whatever it is right now per share, that, that just, yeah. I can't do that. Uh, we need to talk stocks offline. I got an English jet. She's had team missed again. She's part of American Airlines. We're her last nice share. Dirt cheap. So, um, Phil, also, I did too. Um, I didn't get, well, I bought some AMC. So, full disclosure, I bought AMC when, 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 when folks started talking about Theaters opening back up like probably around September, October last year. I was like, ooh, that's a good thing. I bought some AMC. Well, when I bought it, it was at $6 a share. And I was like, ooh, all right, boom. I said, all right, cool. And then they kept talking, kept, it was, it was at like $5.85. So five, it was just under $6. They kept talking, kept talking, and it went up. And I was like, ooh, this is going, this is, this is going to the moon, right? So I bought some more shares. Now, mind you, I think I bought, Two or three shares, okay? I, not many. Again, I, I don't have big money. I, I'm not there yet. So I bought a couple shares at, you know, close to $6. And then I bought a couple more shares when it just went over $6. I'm like, okay. And then it dropped. I was like, what the hell? So then it dropped down and I bought some more shares at like like three and a quarter, three fifty, And then I bought some more shares when it got down to about $2, okay? All told, I had 20, 25 shares of AMC. When everything happened at, towards the end of the January, I'm like, what? Yo, I had a gain of AMC shares only of $400 in one day. Only. And I had 25 shares. And I was like, oh my God, it's like it's still climbing. And I held. Nope, 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 nope. I, I, you know, there comes a point in time. When you kind of just have to say, I'm going to walk away with these profits. I learned my lesson the hard way. But the whole deal was it dropped. And then I, I kept holding. I was like, well, it's got to go back up, right? Everybody talking about it. It's got to go back up. Well, it went down, went down, went down, went down, went down. And I said, I'm, I refused. Like, I got to the point where I had about 100% profit. And I said, all right, I'm selling. So I sold my AMC shares, the shares I had at Chase at about $758. So did I make a pretty penny? I made a pretty penny, you know, contingent upon what I put into it. But, mm -mm -mm. like, yeah. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, and uh, so I didn't, I didn't buy into. So Phil, I didn't buy in the Royal Caribbean, but I, I did buy in the Carnival. And the reason I bought in the Carnival is one, we use, we, we, we sell Carnival, okay. Carnival at the time was cheaper. I bought into Carnival at under ten dollars per share. Okay, Carnival last time I checked was at like twenty six. It was either twenty two or twenty six. Let me look at it right now. So, Carnival. Ugh, I hate seeing red. Carnival's at twenty six. I bought into Carnival at under ten dollars when it fell in March of last year. Man. Um, but I did look in the Royal Caribbean, but again, at the time 
I, we were my, so my wife and I when we first started out, we took fifteen hundred dollars. Like all right, we're gonna take fifteen hundred dollars, and we we said okay, we're gonna try and get ten different stocks, and we're gonna put about a hundred dollars into each, and that was how we kind of divvied it up. And and you know she's like ah oh, we'll we'll have some like some extra money off to the side, and I'm I'm like you know it was one of those deals where I. I, I opened up this brokerage account kind of on a whim and I'm like, ah, I'll just open it up just because they offered it to me because I had credit cards through Chase, right? And then it was like, uh, all right, well, we started talking about it. My wife, started, wife and I started talking about it. And she's like, oh, you know, we should open up, get in the stock market, blah, blah, blah. I was like, funny you mention that. I opened up a brokerage account with Chase. And she's like, oh, really? And I'm like, yeah. So she says, well, do you know what you're doing? I'm like, hell no. So I'm like, all right, well, let's figure it out. I'll do some reading, some digging. She's like, all right, well, you know, throw some money at it. Okay. So I threw some money at it. She's like, all right. She's like, you pick five, I pick five. So, you know, we're like, oh, I think this, I think this, I think this, I think this. And then every now and then, you know, I was like, I was hot and heavy in the beginning. I'm listening to news and watching stuff. And I'm like, I'm going to pick up some of this. I'm going to pick up some of this. And the, the deal was, I, like, you know, I only, you know, I had a certain amount, right? So when I exhausted the funds from a certain amount, I'm like, okay, now what? And I couldn't buy anything else. I didn't want to sell anything, but you know, stuff was going up and down, up and down. And I said, all right, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and start periodic investing. And I started $25 every two weeks. And I'm like, okay. And then with my $25, I was like, like this for every two weeks waiting. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to get a, couple, a share, another share of this. I'm going to get another share of that. I'm like, okay. And then I was like, all right, you know, I did that for a little while. And I was like, all right, I'm going to put $50 in there. And again, it's what I can afford to put in there. And it's, this is my money now that I'm putting in there. So I'm like, all right. And it's just been a, you know, a slow grind, a slow ride, a slow rise. Um, but yeah, but but Royal Caribbean was more expensive than Carnival. And I couldn't justify buying shares of Royal Caribbean at the time of $25 per share when I could buy shares of carnival for ten dollars a share so that was my reasoning behind getting carnival aside from the fact that we cruise carnival uh you can't be scared oh man darnell dude i am scared because i mean tying up my money is tying up my money victor says so since there was so much talk about brisket prices uh we sell it i haven't sold an entire brisket to a customer however i do sell brisket at 25 dollars a pound wow and all my customers have been happy at that price. That's what's up. But your briskets probably cost more. Um, yeah. Oh, man. Hey, Jimmy. Uh, good luck with your surgery tomorrow. Captain Amy says I can lose 20 to 30. Dollars or 1,000? There's there's a big difference. <laughs> I look forward to selling a full brisket to a single customer someday. Yeah. And let's see, in Texas, you pay eight to ten a half pound for brisket. That just uh, okay, and sometimes they're not good. It may be replaced. There's exceptions, but you have to know where to find them. Yes, indeed. A thousand shares of Sundial. Jeez, I wish. Again, I'm not there yet. I am still a newbie when it comes to. All right. Um, and see, like Sundial is one of those. It just it. Oh, it scares me. It's too volatile for me. I mean, I I I know that I could get in there and you know get some, but been too much up and down. One of my daughters works for Chipotle. I've been trying to get her to have them give her stocks, and she just doesn't get it. Y'all you know, seen the stock price for them? It was six hundred dollars when I told her that. Now nah, what is it now, Alton? CMG. Hmm. What? What? Damn, son. That's uh, 125%. Damn, son. Uh, NWBO. See, that's one of the problems though with Chase. I have to buy whole shares and I can't afford anything. B O. Uh, Northwest Bio Biotherapeutics. I have seen and heard talk about them because every now and again they have like a, you know, the, the winners and losers, movers and stuff like that. Um, 
But uh, I can't buy big money like Tesla, Apple, or well, not Apple, because once they did the split, I was able to get in then. Tesla, uh, there's another one I've been looking at and I can't afford it. Um, oh, what? Walmart and Target, those ones. I'm up to a thousand shares of cents. That's what's up. <laughs> Play. Ah, uh, I don't know if I need to get back in. I will, but you know what, man? I I tell you, I will. I will sit on the sideline and I can say I, I made I have made some money in AMC. Have I made all the money? No. And and you know what? I'm okay with that because I don't have the I don't have the ability like I'm I'm not there yet. Let's put it that way. I'm not there yet. I don't have the fortitude or or just the the extra money to just say, Oh, I'm gonna put you know, put it here, put it there. Investing in trading. If you don't get that, you're wasting your money. Um, so Darnell, I I do understand it, but I don't. I I'm not there yet. Uh, stay away from Carnival because two of the ships that were affected back from Carnival affiliates. So that's part of the reason why I bought into Carnival because they stopped drop so low. I was like, what? Um. Yeah, that you know what, Phil. Those those things and, and and one of the reasons why I invested in Carnival again is because we sell Carnival, we believe in Carnival, and I'm telling you, man, it was one of those things where my wife was like, "Look up Carnival," and I'm like, "Okay," and I looked it up, and I'm like, "Oh man, it's, it's under ten dollars." She was like, "Buy some of that." I'm like, oh, "Okay." Actually, you know what? She didn't. I bought Carnival on my own because you know when I bought Carnival, is it dropped or it was dropping, and Carnival said, "Hey, we're going to use." Of some of our ships and and uh, and turn them into floating hospitals so people can stay on the ships and quarantine. And I was like, oh man, that is awesome! That Car the CEO of Carnival is offering up the ships to you know they're not doing anything. So the CEO offered up the ships to be like floating hospitals, and I was like, all right, I like that. And I bought a couple shares of Carnival. Dude, I'm looking at it right now. My carnival stock is up 166%. 166%. Yes. Um, yes. There, but there's been some fluke stocks. Like, my wife, for, for whatever reason, she's like, you know, with everything happening, she's like, we need to look into gun stocks, like shares of gun stocks. So she came with OLN, Smith & Wesson, Vista, Vista Outdoor, and... Um, and it was one more. And Ruger. Okay. And I tell you, Ruger, Smith & Wesson, um, Vista, and OLN. Smith & Wesson used to be a part of a different, and I can't remember what it was, but it was a division of another, you know, outdoorsy company, and then they split off and... and it had Smith and Wesson separate, yeah. One of the better the Smith and Wesson, eighty percent. Uh, Vista Outdoor Inc. two hundred percent. You know, and, and this is another one of those things, man. If I sold on January sixth, the date of the insurrection, man, I'd have been sitting pretty. Bought back in. What I know now, I just yeah. What I know now. Ugh. Hey, first love, be easy. Uh, yeah, Rob. Uh, I exactly. I'm just like, nope. I'm gonna. I'm going to. I'm gonna sit out. Okay. I'm gonna sit out until all the uncertainty and and you know all the. I'm gonna say jokes, but everything like that. Yeah, out in Amazon is another one. I can't. Uh, I can't afford QQQ. Um. So I looked in the QQQ, and it is um. I thought QQQ, yeah, I can't afford that one either. Yeah, uh, like I, there was some a multiple multiple letter um, tickers that I was looking at, and I'm like, damn it! 
LTC. Wish I had to kept my Litecoin from last summer when it was 25. Yo, I bought Dogecoin at 18 cents. Or, yeah, it was 18 cents. And I had like 1,500, like this is between 1,500 and 2,500 shares at 18 cents. And I was like, and mind you, that was like not even 100 bucks. And it dropped. And it went from 18 cents to like 16 cents. And I was like, oh, hell no, I'm out of this freaking, like, no, I just, nope. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I, I'm like, yo, I don't like, I don't like gambling. I don't like gambling. You know, I, I want sure money. I want sure money. Uh, NWBO looks good at down 25. I have to do some due diligence. NWBO. Oh. Yeah. So, the problem with um, something like this is it goes like this and it's like, boom, a news catalyst just pops off. So you kind of have to see what they have in the pipeline. And you can go out to their website and then kind of look and see what they have. But it's so funny. Actually, I think I might know someone that works for this company. Um, my wife actually works in pharmaceuticals and um, like AstraZeneca, right? So AstraZeneca, the... And they're not, they're not headquartered. What is it? AstraZeneca. Is it AZN? Yep. AstraZeneca bought out the company that my wife's, one of my wife's best friends works at. And I'm like, you don't work for AstraZeneca. Like, because she was at our house the other day and she had a mask on it that had the AZ. And I was like, is that, that AZ for AstraZeneca? She's like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, why do you have one of AZ masks? She's like, because I work there. I'm like, no, you don't. You work for Metamune was what it was. She's like, no, nah, we got bought out by AstraZeneca. I was like, oh, really? What? And I'm like, hmm. Anything I need to be, you know, <laughs> anything I need to be, you know, she's like, no, nah, no, nah, you know, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, they're, they're putting out um, a COVID vaccine, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, the, the problem is AstraZeneca wasn't as, you know, wasn't uh, as effective or, or whatever the case was. Um, it was like, was it causing clotting or, yeah, blood clots. I know it was something. Um, so it's been, it's been like this, like people were leery about it. And then when a lot of the, the EU stopped using, it was like, eh, uh, but I was like, okay. So I've been watching it, but again, at fifty dollars a share, I, I can't do much with it. And I'd much rather take fifty dollars and put it in something that's gonna earn, you know, something else. Cause earning like one percent, two percent on a fifty dollar a single share is not as good as earning, you know, five to seven percent on a five dollar share. Just just not. <laughs> or it's just, she's just sitting on the on the sidelines with popcorn yeah mm -hmm. yeah Alton I agree um, he says there have just been a few of those cancer treatment stocks that haven't panned out the whole thing Alton is, is the news catalyst you know they can just like freaking SENS when SENS got approved I'm like, okay, I'm waiting. And it went up like 2% or 3%. And that's like, all right, where, where's the rest of it? Like, what's up? And it just didn't, it didn't take off. Like it didn't, it's one of those things where there's so much other news going on that it's, it got buried. Um, it got buried. Uh, Alton, you know what? I did some, I used some of that Uncle Steve's the, uh, smoke bomb. And damn it, I forgot to say it. While he was here, I made some, uh, was it? Oh, I made a whole chicken and I put it on that, man. Yo, was it a whole chicken or was it legs? It was legs. I made it for the kids, basically. Yo, that stuff was pretty good. It, it is smoky and peppery. So, Tessa's the number three. She was like, oh, this is too spicy for me. I'm like, it's not that spicy. But anyway, it was pretty good. 
So that's what I'm saying, uh, Phil. I bought um, where I would have bought. It was it was like one of those things where it was either or. And when I looked at Royal Caribbean, it was at about thirty five dollars. Is when I looked at it, and I was like, ah, I prefer to put it in the, into uh, Carnival. Now, hindsight being twenty twenty, I wish I would have bought both of them, but I only bought uh, Carnival. Da -da -da. Yeah. Yeah, Alton, uh, definitely. <laughs> Rob says these diamond hands. Yo, I I tried to and I was diamond hands for quite a while, but you know what, man? I, I I'd much rather and this is this is me being practical, I'd much rather pay off a debt and and have less debt then try to worry or try to milk a you know five to ten percent um increase or 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 a gain because i'm paying 15 20 percent on a credit card i'd much rather pay that off and then have the disposable income to invest and that's what i'm trying to get my you know man I'm 40 years old, my 20s and, and a good part of my 30s, man, I, I messed up with my money, man. I wish I knew then what I know now, and I would have been, been, been invested. I would have been started investing in 2008 when everything went down then. But I'm glad that we got into it when we did, because I'm not too late. I'm not too late. Um, da, 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 da. Rob didn't listen to me about AMC and jump ship. <laughs> uh I can't squat box. Ah, blah blah blah. Jumped over to send out almost seven dollars a share. Holy cow. Yes, so Alton I, and that's what I said too. Uh since Sonics is definitely a long term hold. I think that's just some years before it really takes off. And you know what? I that's why every now and again I'm like, all right, I'm gonna buy two or three more shares. Uh I am only at so again, my periodic investing, I kind of have to spread things out. Um, I'm at 32 shares in Sundial right now, or Sensonics right now. And it's one of those things where I might take one share of something else that was more profitable. And I'm like, all right, you know what? Boom. Um, right now, like I'm, I'm, I'm deeply invested in gun stocks right now. I, I think, you know, SHTF or when, when the poop hits the fan scenarios, like people are scared. And uh, folks are still buying guns. You know, there were 8 million new gun owners last year and like ammo shortage and all that stuff. So I'm like, nah, I'll stick with it for a while. Um, uh, B says anything digital is fake money. All right. Uh, Captain Newby says 52 shares here. Shoot. Well, damn, I, I need to catch up. <laughs> Hey Phil, be easy, man. Yes, indeed. Um, Phil, I'm not, I'm not there yet, man. I, I can't, I can't compete with you guys. I'm, I'm still a little teeny. I, I'm, I'm not even a tap hole yet in the pond. I'm, I'm literally just dipping my feet into this whole deal. But Phil, definitely big ups, mad respect. Um, be easy. Tell the girls I said what's up. Tell the missus I said hi. You know, hug them all, all that stuff, and keep your head down when you get the parts unknown. That's, that's it, man. Well, Rob, you know, I can't put $200 from each paycheck. I can't do that yet. I'm not there yet. Um, I'm, st I'm still paying tuition and, and things like that. Uh, the good thing is I don't, you know, I'm not even going to say no, no, no this and no that, but I'm still paying tuition. Let's put it that way. Um, we buy physical gold and silver. That's what's up. Oh, body cookers. We got the ghetto up in here. Ha <laughs> ha. He said they came in late. Hello. Yes. Dude, um, I wish I could afford Tesla. Again, Tesla is another one of those that I can't um I can't afford. Because my main brokerage is Chase, and Chase does not allow fractional shares. So 
I'm paying my tuition? Nah, man. I'm paying tuition for my kids. Uh, fortunately, I paid off my tuition, but my tuition was through Sally Mae, and Sally Mae bent me over. So I'm still paying, technically, uh, for my tuition, too. Um, though it's been dealt with, but Sally Mae, man, it's just freaking highway robbery. I mean, you have no other choice to get educated, and they give you a, it's like a predatory loan, all right? Sally Mae is the worst, the worst, the worst. I, I'm like, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother night. But look, yo, you know, it's crazy. It's almost midnight, and I have not given you guys the link to the video for tomorrow. So, oh, oh, sorry. There's a video coming up tomorrow, coming out tomorrow. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that right now. And I'm going to get it into the chat. And you guys who are here can uh, watch the video um, after we finish. We've just been talking and shooting the breeze. And I really am grateful that you guys are still hanging out. Um, I, you know, usually I open up the chat and or open up the video to make sure it's running. And I didn't even do that. All right. Let's see, man. All I can say is the focus on getting debt free, bro. Once you get there, there's a whole new world to play in. We've been there for the last 12 years. So, Alton, I'll tell you what, man. You know, when we were sitting at, at your house around the table around the island and y'all were talking about how y'all were debt free, I'm just sitting there like, I'm trying to do that. Like, I'm, I'm trying to be there. And I've, I have made some strategic moves. And I, I'll be honest with you guys. I've taken, you know, I'll take, I'm going to say a loan. But it is a loan. It's a, more or less a debt consolidation from my 401k. And I'd much rather pay that back at a lower interest rate and, and have no credit cards. But it's like one of those things where, you know, things come up, things happen. And, yo, if I got to take some money or if I got to put something on the credit card in order to make sure that things get fixed or repaired or at a big expense, you know what? Sometimes that's what you got to do. And I'm like, all right, well, and, and I have... Uh, um, an employee stock purchase program and I use that more or less as almost like a bonus, right? I will put some money into my 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 employee and so ESPP, right? Employee employee stock purchase program and I will put some money in that and it's almost like a savings club. So I put it in there and about once every year, once every 18 months, I'm like, "All right, let's see what I have in there." And I'll take it out and I'm I'm you get paid, you get paid off, you get paid off, you get taken care of, you get taken care of. Boom. And I was like, all right, well, if there's anything left or if I've done some big spending, like last year was was a year, uh, did some big spending. And I'm like, all right, you know what? Um, let's let's get this debt consolidated and taken care of. And I paid everything off. And I was like, all right, you know what? Let's go to the 401k. Let's let's do a consolidation. Boom. All right. And and I'm doing it that way because the money is is, is, getting, is being paid. Everything's being paid automatic through through my pay. I'm like, this is easy. When it's not coming out of my pocket and it's not affecting me, my dollars at the end of the day, and I'm still able to pay my tuition or tuition for the kids and anything like that. Like I said, I, I've done some restructuring over the last year or so to try to get myself in a better financial position. When I was younger, I was way dumber. And I've learned some things in the, as of late. And, you know, I'm paying for it of sorts. And, you know, my car's paid off. My... You know, I'm still, you know, we got we got a second mortgage in the house and other things like that. But those are things we have a second mortgage because we've done improvements on the house. We've fixed up this or fixed up that. So, you know, one of those things. So I just, I'm trying to take care of my debt before I waste money in the market, if you will. Uh, Brian's his first time viewer. He says he enjoyed hanging. Well, thank you, Brian. Uh, you know, you've gotten to the point where we just, I, obviously, you see, we're talking about any and everything. You know, did you expect to come to a barbecue channel to hear talk about finances? I'm sure that's a no. Um, Brian says we did Dave Ramsey. The debt snowball is a real is a real deal. I am, <laughs> I am uh, completely. I I I, I agree. I, and I've heard, and I I know, like I have a good 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 friend from high school. She and her husband, or if it's not the both of them, at least she did the whole like Dave Ramsey thing and I was like who is this guy and I watched the video or two and I'm like I'm not there yet 
Um, but I'm there now. Like, I'm there and I got there on my own accord. Um, so I I would love to say, okay, I, I'm going to do this or going to do that. I'm, not, I'm still not there yet. But I am putting the things into place that are going to get me to the point where I'm debt free. And that's part of my problem. Like, as soon as I reduce my credit cards, man, you know what? It was a beautiful feeling using my, you know, my, like after a year, year and a half and, and paying my debt down to where I'm like, yo, I owe, I have a thousand dollars, less than a thousand dollars in credit card debt. And it was like, uh, you know what? I'm going to buy this. Uh, yeah, I'm going to buy that. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy that. And I was like, Whoa, I just went from under a thousand dollars to like 2,500, $3,000. I was like, Oh, we, we got to cut this out. And you know, sometimes it's just one of those things like, you know, old habits are hard to break. And I'm like, nope, you don't need that. Nope, you don't need that. Nope, you don't need that. Put that down, put that back. You know, don't, you don't need that. Um, and and I'm, I'm trying to relearn better habits. So I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Uh, uh, I like to bear day raising plan. Uh, even if um, semi close is paying, I feel all right. Yeah, man, I can tell you what really helped me uh, kill on investing to include uh, at work. Okay, only put in what they match everything. Everything else with the paying things off, it works. I, you know what, exactly, Alton. I, so again, the company I worked for, and I'm gonna say it again, but I have a horrible habit of saying again when I'm saying something for the first time. The company I worked for, I had a pension. So I did not, I did not start a 401k as early or as, you know, as I should have. And it's one of those things where hindsight being 2020, I'm like, if someone would have pulled me aside when I was, I started, and I used to work, and I'll tell you guys, I used to work for Lockheed Martin, okay? I don't work for Lockheed Martin anymore. The 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 division that I work for got sold off to another company. Um, or we merged. We got sold. Anyway, so with Lockheed Martin, I have a pension. That being said, I'm like, oh, I have a retirement. They're putting money into this pension for me. Well, you know, I did not have enough people who were, I won't say smart enough, I didn't have anyone in my ear hard enough to say, you have a pension, but you still need to start a 401k. I, I just didn't have that. So for eight, 10 years, I was working and I had the pension. I got a, oh, shoot, it was closer. It was 11 years I did that. I, you, yo, I got a pension. I won't say I don't need a 401k, but I have retirement. I got this pension. So then when we merge with the new company, they're like, oh, you had a pension with Lockheed? That's good. I'm like, okay, I guess I need to start 401k. So I started 401k and I'm like, all right, well, I need to take anything that they're going to give me back as far as a match. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. And I, I invested rather aggressively. So when stuff went down, my portfolio went down. One of those type deals. I'm like, oh, darn. So then I kept, you know, increasing, increasing, increasing. And I think our match is like 4%, 5% at the absolute most. I think it's 3% actually. If it's not 3 then it's 5 And I am putting in right now like 6 to 7% in my 401k. And I know I got to play catch up. I just can't afford to do that. He says, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Uh... All right, so Darnell says, Dash, I'm going to help you out uh, uh, not to be scared for free. Uh, buy companies like Walmart, Coke, Pepsi, Home Depot. I own shares of Coke. I do not own shares in, in Walmart. Pepsi, when I checked Pepsi, I think it was too high as well. I, I got it. Again, so my main portfolio, you got to remember that anything under $100 a share, and when I say under 100 my preference is anything under $50 a share. P S uh, Pepsi Co. Um, yeah, Pepsi is one hundred forty one dollars a share. I can't afford that. Um, now, God, look, at its lowest last year in March, it was at one hundred twenty four dollars. Again, can't afford that. Um, I do have shares of Coca Cola, um, Home Depot. And it was crazy. I did look at Home Depot and Lowe's as people were. Home Depot currently is at $300 a share. And last year in March, it was, or early April, it was $180 a share. I couldn't afford it. All right. And again, I got to buy whole shares. 
I just can't afford that. Um, so that that's the limiting factor, um, which is one of the reasons why I, I looked into Robin Hood, got into Robin Hood, but then kind of got swept in with the whole meme stocks uh, because of the partial share investments. Uh, same thing, I opened up a small, small brokerage account with uh, Fidelity for the OTC stocks and the um, for the fractional uh, shares. Uh, I just, I'm gonna say I haven't done anything with the with the Fidelity, but you know, it was one of those deals where I was like, oh, let's pick three or four different shares and I bought three or four different things and, and two of them panned out, two of them didn't. So I'm like net negative again. I'm, I'm not I'm not sweating it. It's it's there. And the whole thing is, if I decide to move my brokerage to Fidelity, because I, you know, had a good couple of people who were like, I use Fidelity. It works great. You can, you know, OTC stuff, fractional shares, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, cool. But I want something that will give me like a little bit more in-depth analysis and things. Um, I've been looking into and looking at Webull. So I don't know if you guys have any insight on that. Please let me know. Uh, B says, I pay cash for everything. I don't want to be in debt. Yeah, well, you know, I, I'm I'm not rich, man. I'm not rich. I wish I could just rest. <laughs> yeah, Darnell, I understand. Uh, Christian says, do you have any advice for someone uh, who just wants to cook barbecue all day? Do it, man. Christian, if you can afford to cook barbecue all day and sell barbecue all day, then do that, man. But I tell you, it like barbecue is going to become when, when you start cooking enough of it, it's going to become a job. It's going to become work, and then it's just not fun, <laughs> you know. Sometimes you gotta have fun with barbecue, so you just just keep it fun. Is my advice, all right? No matter how much you cook or how much or how little you cook, keep it fun, and that'll 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 keep you interested. Let's put it that way. I was just a man. I went old school with it. I literally took my credit cards and put them in a bag of water and put them in the freezer. That made me really think about using them. Alton, I, I understand. I understand. But you know what? Sometimes things can be so convenient. Now, one of the other things, too, I've done recently at Raz of late. Like, you know, so Alton, I'll tell you what. When I came out to Texas, that trip, I was like, oh, I'm put on, I'm not oh, like, like, like just willy nilly, but I went to Germany. I went to Germany with my wife. While she went for work, I had to pay for myself, right? So that was some money that I put on the credit card. When I came out to Texas, I, you know, I, I put that on that that I have a travel credit card and I have another credit card. Uh, a travel, you know, like uh, uh, it is um, United, so miles, and then I have a Amazon card, right? This one was just like, oh man, I'm spending money on Amazon so much, I might as well use a credit card and get five percent back. Well. When you get 5% back and it's like 20% interest, you do that math. I'm a net negative. So I'm like, nope, stop doing that. So I got a credit card through my credit union and the interest on the credit union is half what I pay for Amazon. But the good thing about the Amazon credit card that I have it is for bigger purchases. You know, I, I told you guys, well, I told you out and I bought this new laptop. 0% interest. Ciento percento interest. Interest. Anyway, um, well, that was a hundred percent. Ciento. This is zero percent. Okay. Um, so zero percent interest. So I was like, oh man. The, the the bad thing is, obviously, there's certain times when I can make those, you know, incremental payments, and other times when I can't. You know, something else comes up, or yo, we gotta go to Sam's, or hey, I gotta spend five hundred dollars in Costco because we need this. Like yo, I have a deep freezer. My freaking one of my, one of my deep freezers just died. Guess what? <laughs> I'm gonna need to be looking for another five hundred to six hundred dollar deep freezer. You know, it's just just one of those things. Uh, so things come up. All right, repairs around the house, other stuff like that. Uh, Barrio says my motto is cash, lay away, or don't get it. Yeah, you said one charge card that you can uh, pay off the whole balance at the end of the month. I gotta crawl before you can uh, before you can run. And you know what, man? I was doing very, very well at doing just that, man. I like, I have, and you know, it's one of those deals where I'm like, all right, well, I'm gonna set up a couple of recurring payments on the credit cards because my bank account cash flow is kind of it ebbs and flows. If something big comes out, then uh, or I gotta pay like my freaking registration on my vehicles, or 
you know, like my registration on my van and my registration on my car come in the same month. That's like $500 in vehicle registration. Now, granted, it only happens every two years, but I'm like, ah, <laughs> you know, that is, that's just a hit that I don't want to have to do. And sometimes it's like, um, I can pay $500 to that. Or if we do a huge, you know, not huge, but hey, we need to like a, do a re big restocking of stuff from Sam's or from Costco for the household. Yo, uh, I got to do that. Uh, Hands of Seas is, ha uh, have you ever smoked chicken livers? No, I have not. I have never, never, never. I am not a fan of chicken livers. Uh, he says if I can pay cash, if I can't pay cash, I don't need it. So B, I've 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 done that for a while. Uh, nope, I'm n I don't cook chicken livers. I don't. I'm, I'm not a fan of liver. Period. Um, what's up, John? How you doing? I saw you pop in. I was like, what? Wait, I I I I was talking and I, I mentally did not say hi to you. I'm sorry. Um. Rob says I use other stuff for extra money, side websites, etc., and raise chickens so you don't have to pay for eggs. So, uh, Rob, I know, man, I, I I am envious of your chickens. My wife wants chickens. The problem is, we have animals in this area that will will take down those chickens. Like seriously, um, there was a there was a house up the street from my house that had chickens and like. Something came and plucked those chickens off one by one. It took them about six, eight months to pluck them all off. But, and I've heard people say, "Oh, chickens will defend themselves, and you can put them in the coop." And this and the other man, dog. There's some birds of prey around here. There's some raccoons, some, you know, cats, some rats. They'll probably fight the chickens. It's I won't say it's not. Oh, foxes. There's there's a couple fox around here too. Yeah. Yeah, that's a trade our chicken eggs for our meat at our, oh, for my hunter neighbors. It's, I bet it does. Yeah, Everett says, don't forget the ducks, Rob. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. How much we're paying off debt? With that said, yeah, I pay cash for everything, and I do have a score over 800. I'm not there yet, man. I've, I have definitely increased my credit, credit score. Um as of late and when i say as of late over the last 18 months you know or longer but i mean i'm, I'm just not there yet man I, I look look so my whole thing is this right when i was young i was done with money i was like oh, i'm in this credit you know you, you know you don't you don't know you don't know then fast forward my credit was okay all right i'm in the the mid six excuse me mid 700s and i got laid off and i'm like I can't pay none of y'all. My credit score took a hit. It was down in the 500, like low, low, low 500. And I'm like, well, I'm laid off. I, I can't do anything about it. And, you know, it dropped like a brick, but, you know, it came back one point like a month. <laughs> and like real talk, there was no getting it resolved quickly. And I have been working and working and working, chipping and chipping and chipping. It has taken years for me to get it to the point um, where I am. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, uh, Darnell, I, I am. I, I so I am cool with moving my account. Uh, definitely cool with moving my account. The the thing is, I'm just uh, leery about where. I want, I want to have the best access. I want to have the ability. So, you know, I really like the some of the things that Red, uh, Robinhood allowed, but I didn't like Robinhood. Uh, after that whole limiting what you could buy and what you couldn't, I was like, nope, I'm done. Um, yeah. Uh, let's move to Texas and build a lot. I have a lot we're putting up a sale in Canyon Lake. Where is Canyon Lake, Alton? And how much would you sell it to me for? Uh, in LA, the, uh, Canyon Lake, Texas. Oh, Canyon Lake Chamber. Oh, it's not far from New Braunfels. Okay. I know where that is. Not far from 35, kind of near San Marcos, and just north of San Antonio. Well, north 
east of San Antonio. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, I'm not, I'm not mad at that. I just, Texas, man. I don't know. Texas is far away from our family, Alton. That's, that's all. Yeah, and Laura says the heat will stop me, Alton. But you know what? I'll tell you this. Um... You'd probably get adjusted to it, Laura. I know I despise the heat. Da, 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 da. Oh, Rob says, don't miss Daddy Cooks on the hot seat next week. Yeah, buddy, I'm in for it. Uh, <laughs> Brian says, how often do I budget? Uh, every two weeks when I get paid? <laughs> no. Like, I'm so... um. Okay, I will, Alton. I will, Alton. Thank you. Um, so here's the deal. I told you guys I used to work for a company called Lockheed Martin. When I worked for Lockheed Martin, we got paid every week. And my budget was, okay, I pay this one-fourth every week. I pay this one-fourth every every week. Da, 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 da. Now I'm getting paid every other week, and it has completely thrown me off. Now, mind you, I've been getting paid every other week for four or five years now, and I am still not adjusted. After like my, I won't say my first, but one of my most, my longest employments being getting paid every week. So it's like, oh man, I'm paying this bill, paying that bill or paying this and paying that. As soon as I run out of money, oh wait, it's Wednesday. All right, I just got to make it to Friday. You know, PB&J on Thursday, boom, Friday hits, boom, I got money back again. Okay, man, paying bills on a, on a Friday and being broke by Tuesday and got to wait another, you know, seven, eight business days. It was... It is a uh, real talk. It is a uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, Alton. I'm the same way. I used to be the same way. Uh, Amazon always here. I feel like it. If it's not me, it's her. Um. <laughs> uh, uh, for the work. <laughs> we need Texas credit. Hey, so B, I'm a man of my word. You, you know, you've talked to me offline, and we, we, you know, chopped it up. So yeah, yeah, Rob, exactly. Since ends up, they still want that money though. You ain't never lied. Uh, B says, uh, or excuse me, John says, you are a subject that uh, haunts a lot of us. My wife is helping me get back on track for my credit dude man it, it is it, it is it's scary because everything depends on credit and you know it's, it's one of those things where of course in the beginning nobody wants to give you credit you know you, you need credit but you can't build credit well how do you get something that you need but you can't do anything about it then you gotta like do a deal with the devil and then you get some credit and and it's like if you are not educated properly on the usage of credit and how you know detrimental it can be if you mess it up Man, damn, let me tell you, when I was 18 to like 25, I'm like, man, I ain't paying that credit card. Or it was like, oh, I put on a credit card. Oh, yeah, I'm paying $20 a month. I put on the credit card. I'm spending, you know, five, six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars a month. I'm paying $20 on it. Man, I got credit cards maxed out. Can't do nothing. Can't, can't afford to do anything because I'm paying credit cards. And then I was like, all right, you know what? Let's take this seriously. Let's start paying stuff down. So I start paying stuff down, and, and I was like, I, I'm like, I am upside down. I can't, you know what? I, you know, I was like, um, be able to eat or pay credit cards. Brother got to eat, all right? And that's what I did, and I, I, I messed up, and, you know, I, that was it. Uh... Da, 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 da. Yeah, so Alton, you know what? I was reading an article about that. And the whole deal is uh, because of the pandemic, people are not having to live within commuting distance of their offices any longer. That being said, there's a lot more people working remotely. And again, with that being said, people were working, you know, any and everywhere, man. I Dude, I was listening to or reading this article and they were talking about reverse gentrification where, you know, people were going into places that were like really inexpensive 
and 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 modest. And because of the fact that they came from Seattle's, the the Silicon Valleys, the Boston's, the you know the major metropolitan areas where the, everything was so damn expensive, they their their salaries were so much higher than local folks. They're like, oh, this this house is two hundred thousand. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put an offer for three hundred thousand to make sure I get it. And they're driving up the cost of real estate in all of these little teeny hick towns or, or like nice places. And I think this one was talking about like specifically in and around like Lake Tahoe. For whatever reason, I think that's what it was. And it was like like ridiculous how much folks have driven up the cost of these houses in the past year. And anyway, uh, it's one of those things where, dude, can I move to Texas and work from Texas? Yes. Um, do I want to move and live in Texas? I, I like Texas. I do, but I like Austin. <laughs> I like Austin. I don't necessarily know about the rest of Texas. I like Austin. All right. Uh, B says he went to college at UT. I uh, lived in New Braunfels on River Road. Just uh, to date myself, Shiner was a buck a bottle. <laughs> Hey, El Barrio says, I enjoyed your videos on cooking ahead of time and having my customers pick up their Easter briskets late Saturday so they can reheat them on Sunday. It helps me sleep and makes cooking more enjoyable. Yes, indeed, man. You know, there's nothing worse than being like on the timetable and having a rush. I don't, I hate having a rush. I hate having a rush. Uh, it takes me one to sell my house now. But uh, then we got to buy something. Oh, man, out and I already know. I watched one of these money lender who has a YouTube channel. Boil a brisket. It was insane. Oh my gosh. Uh, here's my last thing on stocks. If it's a five dollar and under, it's a penny stock. That's how you feel there now? Shoot. Oh, man, if it's under a dollar, <laughs> that's a that's a penny stock to me. Uh I, I wish I have a couple um less than five dollar stocks. And I mean I'm doing okay in some and others I'm not. Um, but man, the house next door is half the size of our house, and they sold it in like two days for almost four hundred thousand. No damn way we would have spent that much for a two thousand square foot. But see, that's the thing, Alton. Like that, the the house housing prices in in Texas, okay, are an anomaly. I think, Captain Newbie, be easy. You know, I'm I'm sorry. You know, the, the the energy drink. So Alton, I I figure you're working tonight, Alton. That's why you know you you've been you've been gracing me, and I'm I'm very appreciative. Hey, look, if you haven't already hit the thumbs up and you're still here and you haven't done that, please do it. I, I try to remind everyone every half an hour or so. I sucked at it tonight, but we we're going on three hours, and I'm wide awake. Unfortunately, you know, two two energy drinks. Um. Yes. So. Uh, <laughs> Rob says, I still got to thank Alton for introducing me to Dash, man. You know, it's one of those things, man. It's, it's kismet. You know, sometimes um, it's a rule. if it's under $5 and they have to maintain a dollar average or they get booted. Yes. Um, um, so, uh, Alton, the house prices in Texas are an anomaly compared to some of the other places. Um, the cost of living is much lower in Texas and it does not equate uh, literally to other places. If I took my house and picked it up and moved it to Texas, you probably, you could not, I, well, if I took my house and my land, okay, and moved it to Texas, you probably would get about the same amount of money. Now, mind you, I live in Baltimore City, so that's gonna reduce my the price. If I took my house and moved it to the other side of the zip code, my property value will be double, double, easily. And when I say double, we're looking at almost $500,000, okay? But my location where I am in Baltimore City versus Rob, Rob lives outside of Philadelphia. If he took his property and moved it to um, inside the city limits of Philadelphia, he probably could lose, you know, 30 to 50 percent of the value of his house. Um, it just it just kind of depends. But all of these people who live in these high expensive housing areas are moving to Texas because the property in Texas is dirt freaking cheap. 
dirt cheap. And in comparison to like folks who are living in New York paying, just like Laura said, Laura said, you know, a, a 2,000 square foot house is going for over a million dollars. Well, now you got a 2,000 square foot house that you can buy for two and a quarter. Yo, my income will support a million dollar mortgage and I'm getting a house for two and a quarter? What? I'm balling out and I'm buying a mansion for $500,000. That's two or three times the size of what I could get for a million dollars back in another place. And folks are doing it. Uh, D says, I'm driving 5.7 liter. And uh, they gave me a rap for as a loaner. He says, I'm hating life. Dude, uh, B, I've been there before. My wife has a minivan and there's been times where we've had to get a loaner and they give us like an economy crap box. I was like, nope. After the first or second time of doing that, I said, now, look, I'm going to pay the extra $5 or $10 for the insurance to make sure that I can get the same size vehicle. Uh, no state tax in, in Texas either. Shh. Uh. No money down USDA loan. Well, I bought them for closure. I can sell now for almost double what I paid. That's what's up. Um, this one is not far from me. Not, almost 2,000 square foot. It went 849,900. Not just 849,000, but 849,900. Jeez. Uh, we just got a 2017 pay cash. Yes. Man, foreclosure can be scary, but also can be a diamond. Yeah, for, for some. Um, da, 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 da. Da, 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 <laughs> Rob said um, his neighbors hated him at first because he brought down everyone's house value. Yes, Ron, how you doing this evening? Yo, dude, let me tell you about something like that. So the house next door to me, directly next door, if you guys have heard me talk about, you know, the, the, the young couple that lived there, how they, they had Jumanji. Like I told you, she was like a, a weekend or into it, not, not witchcraft, but like celebrating the earth or mother earth and stuff like that and then, you know they used to have like it was like drum se sessions and i'm like yo got jumanji in the, in the yard across the way so she is a teacher okay and he also is in education but she is a uh, baltimore city school teacher and you know in order to entice baltimore city or, or into in, to entice teachers from baltimore city to, to buy in the city they had like crazy programs. Yo, she bought this house, well, they bought this house for like $100,000. The house is worth $250,000 easily. And they bought it for actually less than $100,000. Now that I think about it. They stayed in their house for three years and was out. As soon as their, their time was up, they were out. And not, you know, not for nothing, they... They were great neighbors. We loved our neighbors. But, yo, they took that money and was like, deuces. As soon as the, the, the market recovered, pff, man. I know somebody I was actually talking to my wife today. And she was telling me about one of her friends. She bought her house at the peak of the, you know, house crisis. And they were upside down on the loan on the house. And, you know, after paying on it for so many years. And now that the, the housing market is kind of rebounded. She's like, yo, we getting out of this house. We getting out from underneath this house. We were upside down for such a long time. We getting out. And that, that's a good thing. That's a beautiful thing. But not everybody can do that. Uh, da, 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 da. Darnell said, that's what's up. Yeah, man. Shoot. Uh, Kevin. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Kevin, I, you know, people crap on Rudy's. I like Rudy's. Da, 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 da. Overseas 15 years. It will take me years to rebuild our credit shame. I have to pay cash. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's a good point, Rob. He said um, some of them took advantage and lowered their property taxes. Dude, you know what we just did? We got out of paying the PMI. We finally have our, you know, everything. So, yo, they make, they make... Um, getting out from underpaying a PMI like a uh, Rube Goldberg machine. That's what a, I akin it to. Um, 
we had to go through so many hoops and do so many things that they would not allow us to get from out from under the PMI. And it's like, yo, we've done this, we've done it. We've tried to get out the PMI two or three different times in, in the past four or five years. And it just won't, it won't, 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 won't let it happen, won't do it. Yo, we finally got from out from under the PMI. Now, mind you, we've been in this house for 15 years. But, you know, it's one of those deals. We refinanced once. We did some, you know, home improvements and stuff like that. So our, our you know, the the loan to value of our property was, was up there with the value of our property because we were taking equity out of the house to put back into the house. And it just, it, it you know, finally we've gotten ahead of it. Let's put it that way. Uh, uh, nice, Laura. Throw some. Yes, indeed. Banks. I guess that's what you meant to say, Alton. <laughs> yo, Alton, I'm telling you, dude. Yo, we had to fight and fight and fight. I'm telling you. Dude, it was a celebration the other day. Earlier, it might have been Monday. If it wasn't Monday, it was yesterday. We got that letter that said, you know, um, we we are removing the PMI. Yo, yo, talk about a celebration. Yo, the PMI is like two hundred dollars a month. A month. It's like hell yeah. Um, I don't think it's two hundred dollars, but I mean, still, it it's a decent chunk of change. And it's like, all right, well, we're used to paying that money. We're going to keep paying that money towards the mortgage so we can pay the mortgage down faster. And that's just one of those things, man. But golly, sometimes, sometimes, man, you just like, damn, can, can I get a break? <laughs> can I get a break? Anyway, uh, it's 1230. I am still wide awake. Um, The private mortgage insurance for, so Darnell, for you probably... Uh, with your with a VA loan, I think you were you seem to be military or ex military. Um, as a private citizen, <laughs> uh, you have to pay a, a, a principal mortgage insurance. So the whole thing is, if you don't have a big enough down payment, now mind you, when my wife and I were twenty four and twenty five, we purchased this house, uh, and we didn't have a huge down payment. Okay. We didn't have 20% to put on our house. We bought our house at, you know, 100% loan to value. And we had, I mean, we had to buy our house and get what they call seller's assist. So the sellers paid the closing costs on our house. And it was like, all right, you know, you, in the beginning, it was like, oh, you pay, you probably pay for, um, you know, three to five, seven years max. And then you'll be out from under your PMI. Well... That was before the housing crisis, and the prices of houses shot up, so our loan value kept with the houses. So then we refinanced when we when when house value went up. We were like, oh, we're gonna take some money out, and we're gonna put some money into the house. So we refinanced, and when we refinanced, was at the height of it. So then the value of the house plummeted, and we were upside down for a while. So it's like, all right, well, even though we put money into the house and everything like that, boom, everything probably, you know, everything finally turned around. And then because, you know, of the fact that you're paying uh, the amortization on a mortgage, you're not getting anywhere with the actual principal. So your principal stays like this. And then in the last like three to five years, it drops down like this. You're paying all that interest. Well, that does not help with your principal mortgage insurance. The principal mortgage insurance basically says, hey, in case you default on this loan, we're going to make you pay insurance that says that you'll be able to, or that will cover you in case you don't pay your loan. That's what PMI is. Um, and yeah, Darnell, if you have a VA loan, you you know nothing about it. Nothing. Uh, you know no one had to do that before the Rothschilds Federal Reserve Act. Yeah, well, we're not talking about the Rothschilds and stuff like that, B. We're not going down that conspiracy lane. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sell it on my youngest graduation two years so we can drop that. Yeah, Alton, 
Uh, it's one of those things, man. We've we've gone back and forth. Our we have a really nice property. We have a nice property, but our you know our house. We bought this house as a fixer upper, and we fixed up some stuff in this house. But there's still some stuff that needs to be gone over and done and updated. Um, but it's one of those things where when we were younger, we had more energy. Okay. And now it's like, oh, we got too much other stuff going on. I, I'm not trying to do this or I'm not trying to do that. And then I, you know, oh, we gave the Sabres their first win in 15 games. Oh gosh. You know what, Rob? I'll tell you, I am, I, am, I, I don't keep up to date with all of the teams. I kind of just look at the box scores from time to time. If I don't get to watch it, I, I don't really watch it. Uh, I'll put on ESPN for a while every now and again. Or I, like I said, I'll look at the box scores. But the, the team I really, really, really follow, like hot and heavy every every week, week in, week, week out, is the Eagles. Um, I am a Flyers fan. Like, I love I love hockey. Like, I'm not the typical black guy. Like, I, I know. <laughs> you know, I watched hockey. It was one of those deals where I don't know if it was friends or what. But, you know, I went to a game. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And then when somebody started explaining, you know, what the rules were and, you know, can't cross three lines and this is off sides and this is icing and all, all those things. And of course I was one of those folks that used to watch hockey for the fights or that's what got me into it was the fights. And then I was like, all right, yo, they, they are really going at it, you know, going to a game. And I think my first hockey game was at the spectrum. So it was intimate, you know? Uh, but so watching it for the fights, and then it was like, all right, by the time the game was over, I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of understanding what's going on. You know, the puck can't cross three lines. And, and before it crosses over here, you you know, you have to be behind the line and this and the other before it goes over. The, I'm like, oh, all right, I get it. And then I started to, because I knew what was going on. It was like, oh, all right, I can watch hockey now. And I was watching hockey when I was in Philly and the hockey game was on. Outside of Philly, oh, you know, I I'm not a Capitals fan and there is no hockey team in Baltimore. And it's like, if the Caps aren't playing, I don't get to see hockey or I won't watch hockey. Same thing. If the, if the Eagles aren't being broadcast, I don't watch football. I'm not watching the Ravens. I'm not, I'm definitely not watching the, the, the football team with no name. So I've fallen off baseball. Same thing. And it's all Orioles down here. Everything Orioles, 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 and now that the Nats are in in Washington, man, damn! I, I like only time I get to watch a Phillies game is when the Phillies are playing the Nats. Uh, the Phillies don't play the uh, the Orioles very often, if at all. And then of course, you know, I get to see the Eagles when they're playing like a Monday night game or a Sunday night game, or they are the 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 game of the week. Um, and then preseason. Uh, they play the, the Ravens every year preseason. And then um, that's about, oh, and every four years they play, you know, the, the, the Ravens. But other than that, and I don't, I don't get to see the Eagles unless I go somewhere or like I watch the broadcast on, you know, on YouTube the next day. Uh, but I will like on my phone watch the box scores and everything happen. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Ross's hockey games in person are awesome. Uh, da, 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 da. Mana and Papa Joe tomorrow. Might be on with him with a big announcement. We'll see. Okay. Well, big for me. That's what's up. Mama and Papa Joe. Laura says, I is, I is back for good, I think. Well, Laura always is. Laura always has so much to do. She's in and out and 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 gone and back. And I, I love it, Laura. I am so very appreciative that some of you guys hang out with me for this entire time. Like tonight, you know. Josh is learning about Formula One. Man, dude. I tell you, Moto GP. Moto GP to me is greater than Formula One. Um I mean, yeah. Eric, how you doing this evening? Uh, I, I've been a fan of, of MotoGP. Again, I used to ride motorcycles, so I, I got into it. 
um, but I have not been keeping as close a tab on things. And, you know, it's one of those things where I, like, I rode a Yamaha, so, of course, I'm a, I'm a big Valentino Rossi fan. Dude, I want Valentino Rossi to win his 10th championship. He has been so close in the past, like, five to seven years. I'm just like, come on, dude, you need, like, one or two more championships. But it's some cats that have been coming out, and, dude, the motorcycles that have been coming out, it's just been crazy. Some of the folks, like... When Ducati was like on top and Yamaha was like second fiddle or or or, or third place, man, yo Casey Stoner on the Ducati, God, oh that's crazy, oh uh, man. Where I live, uh, you could oh hear the football announcers. That's what's up. Eric says when I'm in Europe, I watch MotoGP. Yeah, for so that's my racing style. F1. Yo, uh, so F1 is good, but but again, you know, it's one of those things where it's almost elitist, where, you know, you used to be able to watch F1 on TV, like regular, but now they put it behind a paywall. You can't just watch it on regular TV. You got to subscribe to this, subscribe to that. Same thing with MotoGP. You used to be able to watch, yo, Speed Network. Anybody remember Speed Network? I used to be like, this on Speed Network, man, watching MotoGP, you can watch the races and get up early in the morning and watch the races on a Saturday or a Sunday and then boom, that was it. Not anymore. So it makes it way harder to uh, watch. Um. <laughs> oh, Darnell says my thumbs hurt and a lack of sleep. He says, Sorry for the typos. No worries. Kevin says your son's still playing base baseball and what position? So Kevin, um, last he was playing, he was... He pitched for a little while, uh, but he, we, obviously, it's been a year since they've played or since he's played, but the last position he played, like, he kind of was all over. Um, he was pretty, you know, he was a good utility player, and they, they didn't have a really good pitcher. So it was one of those deals where they kind of rotated almost everybody, like more than half of the team rotated in the pitch at some point in some of the games throughout the season. But he played first base for a while. He 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 played catcher for a little while. Like he and the, like they would switch off between, and it was like they would kind of rotate and float. But they had like there was one one boy. He was he was a good pitcher. His dad, the the, the one kid. His dad was a pitcher and like like a really decent pitcher, and uh, he was a left-handed pitcher, so it, it it you know it made it that much harder for a lot of the kids who were right-handed to to, to bat. Um, but he he played all over. Um, the one thing he he played more. My son played more infield than outfield, but still, I mean, he played first base. He be he played first base, third base, catcher, and pitcher for the most part. Um, not very much outfield, but I mean, yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't done baseball. We haven't had baseball. Um, so he hasn't really played. Uh, when I went to F1 race, Jackie Stewart was the top racer. Jackie Stewart, like, oh no, that was, it was, that was Ivan Stewart. I'm thinking of from Baja. <laughs> Laura says, I was like four years old then. We stayed the weekend. Nice. On YouTube, check out. Oh, man, dude, you ain't got to tell me about the Isle of Man. What? Laura, I, Isle of Man is on, um, on my bucket list. Let me just tell you. I went to I went to, um, to Europe. I went to the UK for work. And when I was going to the UK for work, I was like, yo, when is the Isle of Man? And I missed the Isle of Man by a few weeks. It was starting after I was done. And it was like one of those things where I couldn't stay and um, like witness the Isle of Man. But the Isle of Man is on my bucket list. I am a big fan of Guy Martin. Okay. I am, you know, I am a big Guy Martin fan. That's another one. I want him to, I want to see Guy Martin win a TT race. Like, yo. Man, I'm a, I'm a fan. Like, I, 
Motorsports, I'm with it. I'm with it. Um, went to a Jays game and they were playing Reggie Jackson. It was awesome. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, Laura, I am. Oh, man, you, you done. You done woke up. <laughs> the spirit. Talk about Isle of Man. You know what's crazy. So, um, the Isle of Man runs over like a week um, on the Isle of Man. Or the Isle of Man TT races run over like a week on the Isle of Man. And when I was in the UK, like I said, I was there a few weeks early for the Isle of Man. And I was like, yo, how far away am I? And I could not make it work. I could not like justify staying in the UK on my own dime in order to go to the Isle of Man. So it was horrible. I was that close. Um, same thing when I went to Germany. We were on the complete opposite end of the country from where the Nürburgring is. And I was trying to get there. Like I was trying hard to get there to the Nürburgring. But the few days I was there, I was there. We landed on Wednesday and we flew out on um we flew out on Saturday. So we landed on Wednesday. We had like a, my wife went to work that Thursday. And then we had off or she had off on um, Friday and we flew out on Saturday. Like we were there for just four days. But I, I could not, could not, could not, could not get to the Nurburgring. ring up. And then, but I got to drive on the Autobahn. What? Man, talk about an experience. And if you haven't seen those videos when I was in the UK, or excuse me, well, I think I did some videos when I was in the UK. I know I brought some candy back when I came back, but uh, it, I did some videos while I was in Germany. If you haven't seen them, just like do a search on the videos while I was in Germany. But I mean, I don't travel all that much, but when I do travel, man, I, yeah. Mac Miller, knock, knock, maybe the finger and flash talk. He died, you know, just watch the video, though. Great song. I'll have to look it up again. I know Mac Miller was from uh, Pittsburgh. My uh, cousin, who's from Pittsburgh, from the Berg, as he would say, um, he would, uh, he is a big fan, or uh, was a big fan of Mac Miller. Uh, let's see. Mac Miller, knock, knock. Knock, knock. All right. I will. Golly, I didn't realize that song was that old. And that says, if you didn't eat at a Dana Kebab, Germany doesn't count. I did not eat any at any kebab spots, but um, again, I had limited time in Germany. Uh, I did go to the beer garden in uh, Munich, though. So that has to count for something. And I'm trying to think. I don't I don't remember what the name of the spot was we ate, but we did like we ate yeah, we were in Munich. Um we went to Carl's Platz and um the beer garden down there in Munich. You know, big central blah blah blah. Flyers fight song a few years ago. Alright, I'll have to keep that in mind or you know, check it out. Uh, yeah, Laura, tell me about it. Yeah, and you know, it's crazy, Darnell. We were in, again, this is one of those things. I, I just, you know, bad timing. We were in Germany a few weeks after Oktoberfest, <laughs> which was good and bad at the same time. Uh, uh, just, just, you know, sometimes when you when there's a place and they're famous for something that happens once a year, you know, it is like, for something to coincidentally coincide with that one thing is like, man, you got a you know, snowball's chance in hell in getting there at the same exact time. So that was pretty much exactly what happened when we were in Germany. It was like a few weeks too late. We were in we were there like towards the end of October. Yeah. <laughs> Alton says he's back. Work snuck up on me. Well, you know what it hasn't snuck up on me? Sleep. Caffeine, man. You know what? And Alton, have I done the Y word at all this tonight? I don't think I have. Uh, fine. My email. Oh, man. All right. That's what's up, Laura. Uh, yeah. 
anyway. See, now I'm thinking about it. I feel like there's one coming. Oh, fresh cup of coffee. So I... <laughs> oh, man, that's... I'm about to go get my ice cream. Maybe that that's what I'll do. Uh, I would check my sugar, but I can't because it's on my phone. <laughs> uh, German speed bump. Oh, man. <laughs> From the Isle of Man, dude. I already, I already think I know what you're talking about. That, that hump in front of that church where they get airborne. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I'm in the ice cream with that hat. Oh, dude, I had some of that. It is... It it is phenomenal, like real talk. I did went to the hockey game at the place called the Ice Box. I think seats are made of big blocks of ice. Woof. G six. No, I'm not. Um, they still haven't updated the the stuff on my phone. I'm still using the Libre. I'm I'm rocking it again. So Alton, one one of the things too, Alton. I don't alternate between arms. Like I, I learned a, a while ago, I do better protecting my right arm than I do my left. Anytime I had the damn thing on my left arm, I, it was like a goner in a day or two. So I only use my right arm and, you know, there's there's some, I won't say scarring, but you know, there's some discoloration and, you know, old adhesive that just doesn't come off. Uh, but I, I stick to that, you know, general vicinity. Um, yeah. And it, it's been working. But I tell you, I really feel like the G6 is more accurate than the Libre is. Um, plus, plus the G6 does the monitoring for you. As long as your phone is close to the to the damn thing, it, it tells your phone what your, your sugar numbers are. Man, I can't tell you um, how difficult it was for me to remember to check my sugar. You know, the first couple of times, I'm like, ah. Just you know, forty points higher than my finger stick. I hit lows a few times, showing sub seven G six. No telling what my real level was at those times. Alton, I understand. I do, but I still like the G six way better than the Libre. I mean, it's just it's one of those things where it takes a little bit of um getting used to. But I I don't know. Is it? I I I still think it's more accurate. I believe. I believe it was more accurate. So I don't know if it was or wasn't because I wasn't checking my fingers because I was like, nope. <laughs> Do the levels. I don't know. Watch it all the time. All right. That's what's up, Alta. How do they put that into your arm? Uh, so there's a. So what happens is there's. So you can see the the outside. It's a sticker, Laura. You, you take. There's an applicator. You put the applicator on your arm. You press a button and it sticks right to your arm. It's a it's it's a glue and adhesive. Yeah, Alton. Now, welcome to the club, bro. Uh, welcome to the club, dude. I I like the G six way more than the Libre too. Trust me when I tell you, I am just waiting for them to support. Actually, you know what? Let me check. Google, Net Cam, what is it? Uh, Dexcom. G six. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Next come. Let's see. Does it support? Support. Come on. Uh, I can't tell which phones. Software and mobile apps. Clarity with this one. Compatibility. We are in the United States. English. And search by device. Android. Samsung. Nope. The S21 is not on there yet. Again, still not there. I gotta wait. I'm like, how long is it gonna take to get to 21? I, I have a, I have a S21 Plus, and it's not supported yet. 
I have been checking periodically. Still not there. I can't get back on it. Uh, all right, so uh, oh yes, indeed. Um, Alton, the like where it is, you know, on your stomach. I mean, not that I haven't hit it and like, oh man, uh, but it's it's like the the it's a bigger patch. Um, and Alton, here's the here's the other thing too, because it seems like you've just gotten on it. It'll tell you, or they tell you that you have to replace the the little um the 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 actual electronic thing. You have to replace it every ninety days. Keep using it until it tells you that it's going to die. It'll last for a hundred and twenty days ish. Um, yeah, definitely. It, it lasts longer than 90 days, which is great because they tell you, oh, you know, you have to change this part every three months. You have to change the, the, the sensors, the thing that sticks on your skin every, every 10 or 11 days. And the, 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 the actual chip part, um, it'll go for 115, 120 days. And, and, and when it's on its last like leg, it'll tell you the battery is going to die. This will be the last time that you can use it. One of those type deals. And then boom. But when I switched is also when I got my new phone. And when I got the new phone, I'm like, all right, I, I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to, to use my new phone on it. And it's like, oh, it's not supported. Oh, uh, well, damn, uh, what do I do now? So I was in between. I had to use my old phone to monitor my sugar and keep my old phone near me while I'm using my new phone because I got the new phone and it just wasn't working. I'm like, all right, well, does the Libre, is the Libre supported on the new phone? Yes. Oh, crap. Now I got to go back to Walmart and order Libre things. At the same time, I had issues with the G6 and I reached out, out to Dexcom and they sent me some. So now I have I have uh, three of the, what's the name, Jones with the patches and one of the, you know, chip readers, whatever, that I can't use. But I, like I said, I'm going to keep I'm keep watching, keep waiting, keep watching because, man, I, 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 like I, need, I need that one. I like that one way more. Um, so, Laura, what happens is there's a little um, uh, uh, capillary, cannulary, whatever, and it, it gets, so in like the center, there's a little teeny tube that, boom, goes into your skin, and it, it doesn't hurt or anything like that, and uh, that, it, 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 it constantly monitors your, uh, like, pulls and pushes blood uh, in through the tube and reads it, and reads your blood sugar that way, so it's, it is a continuous glucose monitoring system and uh yeah I, I haven't pricked my finger in years um yeah is that attached to the thing you think ah uh, yeah it's so it's like i said it's it's in the middle um when you pull it out you'll you'll see the and it's called a cannula i think it's called a cannula um you'll see it and um yeah, that, that's it, and it, it's flexible, and it doesn't hurt. That is the best thing. It doesn't hurt. It's it's like you know the the sound and the the stick of the adhesive is more painful than the actual prick of of the thing that goes under your skin. Um, and I used to think that it was going to be a big deal. It really isn't. Now I have had Alton. Have you ever had a bleeder, dude? Putting putting this on, man. I had one time I put this on my arm, and I must have hit something. And it was bleeding right through the middle. I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> like, oh, it was bad. I was like, oh, my gosh. Uh, my wife was like, what is on your arm? I'm like, I'm, low. I'm looking like, oh, man, what happened? Uh, yeah, Alton uh, is right. He said to transmit your number to your phone or reader through NFC. When you wave it over the device, uh, it's the same one that showed. Yep, seriously, you don't even have, you don't feel it. Nope, not at all. Not at all. Uh, I'm hoping to see you still on and talking about diabetes. This glucose goes <laughs> Yes, indeed. I still prick my finger every now and again to verify that I'm low or high before I can write. Uh, just to be sure, man, I don't. I don't. I have not pricked my finger. I had one. I had that one. Yeah, blood came through. Middle freaked me out. <laughs> I do, man. I was like, whoa. And the whole deal was I put it on and, and you know, pulled my shirt down and went on by my business. And, you know, it was like a big old big old stain on my shirt and and you know missus is like what what's going on with your arm i'm like what are you talking about and i'm looking at it you know like that starts like like a trailing dot. i'm like what the hell i pulled up my sleeve and i'm like oh man uh i saw it right through the middle 
Uh, Victor says, I don't have a problem poking my finger, but uh, I love the idea of just looking at myself. Yo, uh, Victor, it is, it is, it's a game changer. And the difference between the, the Freestyle Libre, which is, is this one, versus the Dexcom G6, which is the one I had prior um, to me upgrading my phone, is night and day. Because with the Dexcom, so with, and, and I'll tell you the pros and cons, and Alvin can, can back me up on this. So with the, the, the Freestyle, the one that goes on your arm, you have to physically take your phone and run it over top of your arm every seven and a half to eight hours you have to do that on a on a rolling cycle the the um the sensor has a memory of eight hours if you miss it you'll have a dead spot in your monitoring the one that goes on your and the other one the g6 goes on your belly okay that one automatically pushes the numbers to your cell phone it just has to be in bluetooth range and if it's not in Bluetooth range or if it doesn't receive a, a signal in 30 minutes, it alerts you. It's like, hey, I'm too far away from the um from the from the G6 from the monitor. And it like not only does it alert you, it's like, hey, after half an hour, hey, I don't I don't I don't see the thing. It's like after half an hour, it's like, wait, it's been another five minutes, I still don't see it. It get, it gets to the point where it's annoying. <laughs> um so, but it, it's great because you don't have to do anything. And, you know, I'd like, there were points where I wouldn't look at my sugar for two or three days. And it's like, oh, all right. Oh, yeah. I'm, and, and I had a high alert and I had a low alert. And if I was in between, there was nothing I had to do. I, you know, I knew what I had to eat. I knew what my medication was and I knew what I couldn't eat. And boom, boom, boom. That was it. So it was great. It was great, great, great. Um... Yeah, so Alton says uh, the G6 scans your levels and sends it every five minutes to the tra and transmits. If you have the right smartwatch, uh, it is compatible. It displays your glucose levels on your watch all day long. Uh, <laughs> uh, da, da, da. Whoa, little fish in the kitchen. How you doing? Marcel, what's going on? So, Victor, it kind of depends. It's contingent on your insurance. Um my or the the libre this one it used to cost me 75 dollars a month for two so what this one does this one lasts for 14 days and it used to cost me 75 dollars for the month to have this but that 75 dollars because i have the, the way that our health plan is um we have the, the the medical spending account so it didn't necessarily come out of my pocket um it it, it was deducted so the way our insurance is, we pay a higher deductible, but once we meet the deductible, it's we pay lower for everything. Um, and it doesn't take long to meet the deductible with the diabetes medicines. You, anyone else, you know, anyone knows that. Uh, so the first year was the only year where, where we had a little bit of trouble because we had to catch up and pay that deductible, you know, not out of pocket, but we had to catch up. But now that we have caught up and we're ahead on the monies that go into the flexible spending account, it's not really a problem. But am I paying more than I would if I were pricking my finger? Yes. Do I you know, miss pricking my finger? Hell no. The reason why my sugar got out of control because I did not want to prick my finger. I mean, I, I, I type all day long. I work on computers. Me pricking my finger was not conducive to my employment. So, yeah. The beauty of the Dex time is uh, you pair the app with Clarity, the app, um, and you can send all the info straight to your doctor as well as your spouse or anyone you want. Yep. So same thing, Alton, with the Libre, you can do the, you know, similar. But the, the reports on the Libre are not as nice as the uh, Dexcom reports. Uh, yep. So Alton says you, you have alarm set that will sound or vibrate if they're out of range. So you don't even really need to look at it. Yep. That's exactly it. Like I said, there were days where I didn't look at it at all. Uh, Alton says he pays ninety day for ninety ninety dollars for a ninety day supply. Uh, mine was is I think it's about the same. I think it was like thirty thirty five dollars for the for the three, which is a one month supply for the readers. 
Um, or yeah, but it's, it's like weird how they they one is a reader, one is a transmitter, one is a receiver. I don't know. Uh, having surgeries, get medical through genes job, and they pay one hundred percent for almost everything. Education is good when it comes to insurance. So the the one good thing about my wife's job is they pay a lot of money uh, towards, but she has one of those um. I can't remember what exactly it's called, but like a, a, a shared benefit type thing where we pay less of an insurance premium, but we pay more for the, for the deductible. And once we hit the deductible, then it goes to like being regular. So the money that she's not paying towards lowering the deductible up front, we put into a flex spending account. And like I said, that first year we switched was the, was the only year we had an issue. And because I have a flex spending account through my company as well as the flex spending account through her company, it, we were able to, you know, hit the deductible. Laura says strips here are 89 bucks. Yeah, so the only thing, Laura, is you're probably going to pay a little bit more for this. And, and in the beginning, I was like, yo, it's expensive. But it was justified because I didn't want to prick my fingers. Um, then when I got the Dexcom one, um, it was cheaper. But then at the same time, the the... A freestyle came down in price. Uh, Alton says you uh, you pay for the sensors, I believe, and they give you everything else. Yeah, right. Uh, you use the side of your finger, not the tip. Laura, man, I'm telling you, I use the side of my fingers, but I was I I was having to check my sugar so often, like it wasn't a you check your sugar one time a day. No, nah, it was a I was checking my sugar three to five times a day because my sugar was that out of control. Um, so, like, I just, nope, I just stopped. I just stopped. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Laura says, just my luck, I would rip it off. Why I never got uh, my belly button pierced, because I rip it out, restless sleeping. I understand. I'll check on my clinic about it. Yep, it's amazing how annoying this little prick can be. Yeah. <laughs> Well played, Victor. Well played. Uh, look, guys, it is. Uh, we're going on almost four hours. I've been sitting here, and I didn't do the Y word yet, and I didn't even get up and go pee. I've been sitting here the entire time. Um. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the move to have my energy drink. Drink one an hour before the live stream starts, and then drink the second one as we are starting. That was a that was a good move. So um, thank you guys so very much the the fifteen or so of you that are still here. Hey, if you haven't hit that thumbs up button for me, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could. And oh my goodness, if you uh if you got in here late, please <laughs> please go ahead and uh, try to catch the replay and and, and uh, see the beginning or what you missed in the beginning. Hey, John, definitely be easy. How is uh, everything going with your build, your smoker, man? I haven't seen any progress lately. But then again, you know, I miss stuff. Uh, so tell me. Uh, Alton says, have a great night, everyone. Laura says, I'm not sure I would get it as it might rip out, though. Laura, I'll tell you, it, it, you know, it's one of those things where um, if you knock it off your arm, you call freestyle and you, and you give them the serial number of it and you say hey um, i put it on for a day or whatever and and, and, it, and it fell off and they say okay here what we'll do is we'll give you a prescription for another one and you go and to your pharmacy and you can get one for free so there is a a little bit of a, an insurance coverage blanket if you will but there's also things that you can put over top of it um uh, something that's called like taxiderm or techiderm and it's a it's like a sticky adhesive the whole thing is when you go if you go to the hospital and you stay and you have to get an iv on your hand they put the iv in the, the line in and then they put this thing over top of it and that thing they put over top of it is what you can put over top of this of this uh, sensor and it doesn't affect the reading but it helps it to stay on alton and i will both tell you that when you get sweaty, the adhesive on this thing sucks. <laughs> it sucks. So in the summer, when it's hot and you're working outside or by the smoker, the likelihood of you knocking off one of these damn sensors is through the roof. Unless you have that thing to cover it up and keep it on. 
Now the Dexcom one, I have, I had not knocked one of those off, and you know I've definitely gotten sweaty working with it or having it on, and man, it was it was great. The yeah, unfortunate thing was, I can't use it anymore because I got a new phone. Uh, thanks, Laura. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to seeing your email. <laughs> Just working in weather. I already know. I already know. Yeah, the tachyderm. Tagaderm. I thought it was tack, but maybe it's tagaderm. You're right. <laughs> Dude, Alton, I told you, man. I told you. Uh... Skin tech and the tech I didn't want the G6. I don't think you need to. I've never knocked it off. <laughs> or it says, why well, I don't even have earrings in bed. I wake up missing. Look, I've had the same same earrings in my ears. I feel like for a year and a half now. Most people don't even know they're there because I uh, they can't see them past my beard. <laughs> uh, but when I when I trim this down, people are like, you got your ears pierced? I'm like, yeah, when I was 16. What? You have earrings? Yeah. <laughs> Been at it. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, well, I got my left ear pierced when I was 16. I got the right ear pierced when I was like 18 or 20. Um, but, yeah. Anyway. All right, uh, how do you stick, he said. How do you stick, how do I stick what? How do I pierce my ears and, and not stick my fingers? Oh, nice. Changing the design. There's nothing like changing your mind, huh, John? You got, you know, wasted time and energy. Ode to joy. <laughs> uh, man. Laura, let's see. What were you referring to? I guess getting my ears pierced. That was, I won't say simple, but it, you know, it was just a momentary. <laughs> First, it's almost ruffle in bed. I don't know what you do, Laura. <laughs> like I said, I just. I, now, I don't lay on my ears because the the back will poke my neck or behind my ear. But, uh, yeah. I just, I'm careful. <laughs> what do you mean? You don't have a Prince Albert, Rob? What? Come on now. I figured that'd be it, like, on your list of things to have. <laughs> All right, guys. I think I'm going to end it on that note. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to end it. And if Rob, if you don't know what a Prince Albert Pearson is, look it up. Hey, yeah, look it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thank you so very much, as always, for hanging out. Like, I, I, I do appreciate it. And man, oh, man, I am, uh, I get to sleep in. This <laughs> is just foul. <laughs> I guess he knows what a Prince Albert is. <laughs> <laughs> or did you have to look it up john good night man oh man yeah hey, I, I i i want to say i can't say thank you enough uh definitely and you know what here before we go i'm gonna paste the link for tomorrow's video one more again uh yeah you guys you know obviously right sure leaving us with that <laughs> I remember open that is jacked up. Look, uh I, I I gave you a video to watch. It's a good one too. It's it's a brisket video. I think you'll like it. I hope you'll like it. Anyway, um yeah, I went on that bombshell. <laughs> Alton, every now and again I get a you know, I get a volley and uh, man, I just I, I spike it. I spike it. I got to. Uh probably have scars from that yeah you probably would emotional and literal or, or emotional and physical i don't put sauce on brisket though uh i like clean joke man i like joke i look i like clean jokes dirty jokes long jo jokes short jokes i mean joke a joke is a joke just as long as it's not offensive um 
just as long as it's not offensive. Anyway, I am I'm leaving for real this time. Stop talking to me so I can say goodbye for final the, the last time. All right, the final goodbye, the final countdown. All right, guys, uh, really, really appreciate you guys being here and, and hanging out with me. This is one of the longer. Yeah, buddy. Uh, um, you know what it is. We had a, we, had, we we chopped it up and, and you know. Yeah, buddy. He, hit, he was like, oh, yo, he's like, yo, I'm, I'm in town. He hit me up. He's like, man, I got something for you. I said, what? Yo. When you gonna be here? I said, you know what? I want, I want you. To, I want to show you something. I said, All right. So I'm like, yo, I need you to. I told him, I said, I, I got an event. You know, come through. If you come through, come through. He said, yo, I'm, I'm gonna be there. He's like, ah, I'm on my way. Bet. Hurry up. So I waited to cut this brisket for him so he could see it in person and so he could taste it. Man, he got to my house. Uh, thank you, B. I, I can, you know, thank you, B. Um. He got to my house and I was like, yo, get in this kitchen, hurry up. I started the video camera, was, was in and out in, in 10 minutes. And then we talked for a while and he was like, oh man, hey, don't forget. He's like, come on out to the truck. He gave me one. I was like, dude, I was like, I'm, I'm kind of hurting. I, 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 ain't, I ain't got none. I was like, Thank you, sir. Man, I have another. <laughs> so we got some live stream fuel for at least a week or two. I'm trying to do my best to not drink it during or in between time. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, Lord. Like I said, just as long as it's not offensive, I'm cool with it. I, I don't. I'm not easily offended. Trust me when I tell you. All right, guys. I am gone, gone, gone for sure. Enjoy that video if you uh, get the chance to watch it. I'd greatly appreciate it. Who the hell is triggering? The Anyway, that's because you were not yawning. Yeah, I'm telling you, I, I got to do this again. Um, um, damn, I'm having brain farts. The rock star an hour before, <laughs> and then one right as I start. And obviously, you see, I'm not tired. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Happy, you also have a happy Easter. Uh, I got a little bit to cook, and I, I think I don't think I'm gonna do too too do too too much um, for Easter. Normally I would, but I'm trying to avoid my contact with people. Anyway, all right, 15th time I've said goodbye. I mean it this time. Do this.